22nd. Um, just a few things, I guess. If you haven't signed in, please make sure to sign your name. And if you choose to speak, um, please state your name and your address so we can enter it into the record. Uh, signing in also helps us spell your name correctly. So let's see, the first item is a minor site plan review for Burger King, 357 Main Street. So this is um, sort of rehabbing the site, um, mostly the interior of the building and then some exterior improvements. Um, and really the <coughs> impacts to the site plan are um, a revised landscape plan, um, not too much more than that. So it's are you sure? Because I thought from the plan that they were removing the drive through that's news to me. Um, <coughs> I have the plans that you gave me. If okay. you want me to show a specific one. I have some renderings and stuff oh. that helps. Um, sure. a live feed to cable so that people can see it at home. Right. Um, ladies and gentlemen, my name is Jeff Benavides from AML Associates. I'm here on behalf of Northeast Foods doing business at Burger King Corporation. Um, what we're proposing to do is um, the exterior of the building currently has these low overhanging eaves. Um, the idea would be to take those off and remove the asphalt shingles and the exterior of the building the siding will all be removed and recladded. Um, this is what I believe we don't have is, is a color rendering of the, exist, of the proposed site modifications. Uh, basically, all the eaves would be taken off. Uh, it would be a vertically sided building. Now, the upper half would be ethos. The lower half here shows a painted CME block that's existing. Um, we're actually proposing to cover the lower third of the veneer brick at this point. Um, and then there's these tower elements at the entrances and also the drive through window that are clouding us next forward siding. Um, currently, there is an LED light band along the top of the roof line. We'll be replacing that with an LED version of the same style. some recently completed remodels of the same uh, style of building that the, essentially what we're looking to do on Main Street. Um, there's these tower elements that are clad in a cement board side. Uh, there's an EFIS upper and a brick lower. As far as the landscaping, um, currently they have some photos of the existing landscaping that's The building surrounded uh, with a bunch of cute bushes that are over, overgrown, uh, and the landscape beds are pretty high. So the idea would be to cut down those landscape beds, uh, remove all this overgrowth along the perimeter of the building, and plant it with some some new shrubs, some perennials. Um, in the island, there'd be some new maple trees, uh, new sod along the front, some river rock around the building. With some holly bushes and same thing along the perimeter of the street uh, on Ash Street would be a line of holly, holly bushes and, and even in the mulch there as well. That's pretty much the extent of the changes. Um, I do have a sample board of the materials themselves. <coughs> on all these tower elements uh, at, the, at the entrances and the drive through windows. Uh, this is the EFIS color, uh, the light band. Uh, this red tile 
is the accent tile at the entrances. Um, and then this metal, uh, all the windows, I guess I skipped that part. With, with the eaves being removed, all the existing glazing would have uh, some sus uh, suspended uh, awnings over the windows and over the entrances as well. That's the extent of the change that we're proposing. Any questions from the board? Uh, was there some question about which trees were getting replaced? So yeah. It was not clear. So I don't know if you saw in the draft decision, there was a number of things that I had folded yep. so that you would maybe address them. Sure. As far as removing trees, the only real tree that we want to remove is at the main side entrance. There's this large pine tree that's kind of overshadowing the building. We'd like to remove that and replace it with a new uh, maple tree. Um, the ones in the drive through would get pruned back. We are adding a good amount of new trees at the, I think we have one, two, three, four, five, six, 12 new trees, looks like, in Pokes. And there's these red maples and these uh, purple leaf plum uh, trees. Mm -hmm. The only other question I have is about <coughs> the light band. So that's the red plastic that you have on top yes and the light would be behind that and the whole thing would be luminous that's correct yeah currently they have one on there now it's just in fluorescent lighting it'd be removed and replaced with an LED style that's that red uh, it's up there in okay there, correct uh, on there currently I've never noticed it mm -hmm. I, I guess I've never noticed it really that's a, that's a good answer. It is a good answer. So the only thing I would say about the LED light, it's going to be behind this plastic cover, right? That's it's correct. Almost like a sign. Yep. It's, we're never going to see the light source itself, like the building across the parking lot from you. <coughs> that's where you can see yeah. every little Christmas light in there. No. Mm. Okay. Okay. And we're not doing signage with this, correct? So we're not that's approving signage. Right. With this? right. That's correct. Okay. I'm, I'm sorry, I misread the plans on the, that we looked at online. For, for some reason, I had the building turned, and I thought that the, the drive through was going away, which would have been a wonderful thing for us anyway. <laughs> That's how that restaurant works, so really. Uh, I did see something on the drive through which I think is, is it part of this? There's some sort of new menu board or a new stand with a canopy and a light source? Um, it'll be part of the signage. Want to make that part they of the signage? In, but they do with the OCU, what the order confirmation unit is now. Yeah. They put a canopy over that to protect the pedestrian from rain or snow while they're placing their order. Okay, because that has a light in the canopy, and so we're going to consider that as sign lighting or sight lighting. I guess it depends on how directly related to the sign <coughs> it is. It, it'll be uh, adjacent to the, the existing menu board stays in place and they put that where the order speaker is now. So currently they have a little pedestal with a little screen in there. That gets removed and this overhang canopy gets re replaces that unit essentially. And there's a light that shines down from there. I get, that would be part of the sign package. Not really part of our scope of work, but the only reason that you're proposing that lighting is because of this, the menu board. That's it wouldn't be there it's otherwise. It's not for the menu board. The menu board is internally illuminated. It'd be basically to be the order confirmation screen to give some light to that. It's a separate piece. It's, um, it's. I'm assuming it's 14 feet high. If there's a canopy that comes across, so the trucks don't take it out. It's uh, it's nine foot clearance for that. It's a nine foot clearance on that canopy. So where do we, okay, <laughs> where do we keep somebody from driving through that? Because there's signs all over Star Wars Drive and people continually driving to those bridges. Mm. They do break away for that intentional reason, but the canopies on the building are all set at nine feet. Well, I know, but no one's driving up to those. No one's driving up to that canopy. It's, it's the drive different. through that somebody in a truck, in a panel truck, might take out if it's only nine feet high. Mm. So there's a clearance box that comes ahead of that. 
there's a bar. Okay. Yeah, okay. okay. That's a sacrificial right. piece. Yep, that's fine. Good. All right, so that's a part of signage, but I just wanted to remind us that there's some lighting on that, and it's going to be up at nine feet high. I didn't have anything else. I just thought it would be nice to see it getting refreshed. Yep. I just wanted you to clarify the height. Will um, the new cladding mm -hmm. um, increase the height of the building? Um, it's supposed to stay to the height of the existing entrance. Do you know what it is now? I would have to verify, but I'm not 100% sure. I think it's roughly that, but I'm not positive. Okay, that's still under the requirements for zoning, so that's fine. <coughs> is there any changes to the striping in the parking lot? They'll, they'll seal code and stripe at the end of the project, so will that they, it all get refreshed. Will they use the same layout, or will it be slightly modified? It, normally stays the same layout, yeah. And what's the scope, I mean, how far out will they go with the sale cutting the whole parking lot of? They would do within their property line. Which is, I don't know if have that. Okay. Mm -hmm. The tandem, the tandem no spaces in front of Capri are on the adjacent lot. They're not on this one. Cover those. I believe the area of the drive through has a flooding issue when it rains. Okay. Would you guys be addressing that? I'll, I'll put it up to the client and we'll address it. Yes, I wasn't aware of it. So I think that's a different property. Oh, is it? Right. If we look at the plan that's up on the screen, you can see the catch basin actually. Yeah, the handicap spots, right? Is that the edge of the property, that dashed line? The dashed line that runs behind the handicap spots? No, I think it's the black no, line is the property line. Right? So they own talking the about line. this. This, okay. this is the property line. That's here. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. That's right. Okay, it's the other way around. Yeah. yeah, the typical the flooding issue has been the you know, parking spaces in front of the liquor store and the natural food store. So, so this is the adjacent Capri. Yeah. yeah. So it's this issue with this catch basin? That's what? No, it's oh, this right about the lower, the lower left of the picture in the adjacent property. Beyond the, oh, beyond beyond the, the yeah. Okay. But that one floods too sometimes. There was an issue yeah. though that when Busa came in to redo theirs, engineering couldn't figure out why it was flooding, right? There was some right. yeah. Yeah. mysterious yes. pipe yeah. run that couldn't be figured out. Hmm. Well, they did. I mean, sometimes in the last dozen years, they they did a major rework of that piece of parking lot because uh, um, there's a um, hydraulic trap there. It does less than. But it's not has no effect on this particular project. Mm -hmm. So the caliper on the trees, it looks a little small. I know the uh, <coughs> trees that we planted in the overall shopping area, those were pretty larger sized trees. I don't know if this can handle that, but. Can't see that, what's it say? Hmm. These are eight to 10, two and a half caliper. Eight to, eight to 10 feet tall, two and a half inch caliper. Maybe that's all I can fit there. I mean, two and a half to three and a half, I thought was where they want it to be, because otherwise you can't, yeah. they don't yeah. do well or yeah. something. Yeah, they're too you know, big. Okay. And it's a lot of additional trees. It is. Taking on that pine, which is nice too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And they're going to lower all of those shrubs in the front, which should open up the building. And <coughs> the sod, is there a water source for that? Uh, I believe 
The site is irrigated. Oh, it is. We'll double check it. Yeah. yeah. Questions from staff or board? No? Any questions from the public? No? Okay. Nothing outstanding with the with that use with that building. <laughs> Should have come with their signs. <laughs> okay. changing any site lighting just building lighting is that so correct wall packs the site pole would be changed out as well yeah, would be. I didn't see a, a um, oh it is on the list plan. Oh. Oh, I saw the cut sheets for fixtures but I didn't see a lighting plan that showed the lighting levels so are any of the poles on the property lines or on the edges? Are they all inboard? Um, they, sh they should be. Yeah, There's no, f I haven't seen a photometric plan, if that's right. what you're asking that was for. I didn't see a photometric plan. Okay. You like see a photometric plan? Well, usually if we're changing out parking lot fixtures, uh, the rules are that the light can't uh, spill out off of the property. So you have to have zero at the property line or at close to that as reasonably possible, I guess. But there is six poles on the property. You have that plan, Julie? Is that the existing? Yeah. I don't have a photometric plan. I think I can have them made up. <coughs> well, we've got it. There's an item in the, in the decision draft about the uh, item 10 findings. The applicant shall provide information regarding the fixture locations. Right, let's see where these are. on the lot line that would have to meet are that requirement. Are those 12 feet high? On the poles, they're probably 20 feet high on a two foot base. There's a telephone pole there. Does that have a light on it too at the entrance? Mm -hmm. I'm thinking this is one of those places where the pole at the entrance, we don't care if it spills light out because that's a really tight turn and it would be yeah. Better to have it better lit on Main Street. Yeah. yeah. <coughs> that's going to matter. Look at. Yeah. And those are just going to swap out to LEDs. That's correct. Yeah. 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 So this, the street behind in the, in the building across at the dentist. Do you want me to get a photometric plan? I'm just wondering whether we really need it for the site, the surroundings of the site. There's no residential. It's across the street. This light's not going to bother across the street. The building behind it is a, the dentist office, and it's commercial on both sides that have more lighting than zero. Here's, here's the issue, though. There. They squat, yeah, the angle. Swapping out. Do we know if we're swapping out head for head? Yes. That's so if there's two heads on the pole, we're putting two heads on it. Right. Because these are these are if they're angles. angled like that. They're canted up, so the light's actually coming towards you as you drive it. Those can be. I mean, the new ones will be adjustable. We can adjust them down. Because in LED. 
at that angle is not a good thing. There's so much they're sharper. Gonna, they're going to want it flat because that's how the prisms are usually right. designed. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Does the fixture have a cutoff shield? Um, anything can come with a cutoff shield. But it's so tall, yeah. it's so high. It's, yeah. That the it's only ones you see that are lenses yeah. like that are when they do with just the street lights and they just to come up to life. I had one other point to comment about the um, the facade. So you're gonna paint the CMU on the base, the bottom part of the facade. The original submission was well, we since uh, the comments came back, we're gonna do a thin brick veneer on the bottom. Uh, three Did feet, you bring that? Which is this brick here? It's not a pure CMU. There is a, a variation in color with it. So it's not going to be a mortared brick. It's going to be a veneer. It'll it'll look like a real brick once it's done. It'll it'll be tool. All the joints will be tooled like a the normal building. brick. Yeah. So that's a picture of it. Same with this one. So there's some variations in color. It won't look painted if that's what you mean. Yeah. No. no. Yeah. It'll, it'll be, be the, the brick and the mortar. It'll be natural. I'm not talking normal brick. <coughs> No, it's actually applied like tile. Okay. It's just thinner, but they do have to do each of the joints. Okay. Kind of. So it'll look real. Okay. Actually, is real. It's just really mm -hmm. thin. And what about the ephus? Did you say that? Did you have a color on the ephus? Th this is the ephus that, color. That is yep, the color. That beige color. Those are those are the true samples of the material that will be put on the building. And then the material on the end cap with a with a yeah it's that one. It's it'll be this wood grain looking material. It's a cement cement siding product. Okay. And Green that's color the color. actual color? It is, yeah. So the only color that isn't on your board is the um the uh the the veneer. The brick veneer, that's not the true. This is this is just one brick of the different shades okay. of, of this brick. But that is one so that's actual. true sample of size and color, yes. Okay. What are your thoughts on the lighting? I'm not concerned. The uh, I mean the LED is uh, directional and the environment is basically immune. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Save us all some time. Right. <coughs> you know, if a problem shows up, we'll bring them back. They have to come <laughs> in for light. They have to come in for signage. So. Hmm? Yeah. They have to come back for signage. Right. Actually, they don't technically. It's business A. Um, okay, but that doesn't conf that doesn't meet the zoning. Okay. So. I guess I'll see what they propose. Someone's gonna come when in and talk to you. It. They'll come to talk to me. Yeah. Right. Okay. okay. So you guys are good on landscaping and materials. Mm -hmm. That looked like that was the only thing <coughs> that was still open. So. Right. Anything we need to tweak? I didn't see anything. Just talk about the the, the veneer, brick veneer. Yep, we're good. Now this still says repainted split face around the base. Well, that was because I was taking it off of his initial. I know, so we should change it. Right. Okay. Just say um, uh, thin brick veneer around the yeah. base.
So Julia, number nine, looks like we're well under the building height. Yes. Us. I'll make a note of that. Okay. And I'll change the wording. that the CPDC approve the minor site plan review decision for the uh, Burger King at 357 Main Street as amended. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Thank you. Thank you. Yes. up we have a uh, minor site plan review for tread 11, 13, 11 and 13 high street High street location. They're not really doing anything to the site. It's mostly interior um, and with some exterior improvements. Mm -hmm. so they can explain it in more detail. Sure. Hey you guys. I'm Lori Haverty. And I'm Tiffany Freitas. Um, so, um, are you guys familiar with Tread One in Reading over on um, Linden Street? <coughs> yeah. So it's it's um, it's kind of going to have a kind of a similar feel to it, where you know Lori and I both really love. Um, buildings that have been running for a long time and just doing upgrades but keeping keeping the core of what the buildings are. So in this particular case, we're starting a new fitness studio um, and the exterior is actually going to be very similar, but we're going to, um, it's okay, I'm just going to go up here. We're actually going to keep the three car garage um, and we're basically going to remove the garage door, put on a facade that's more insulated, that's more, um, that has soundproofing and it's more weather resistant, energy efficient, um, but it will look like garage doors. Um, there will still be a panel of, of glass in it, uh, double pane glass, but it'll actually have the look of garage doors even though they're walls and they'll be you know, significantly thicker. Um, there's also, like you can see too, like this and this door, that it's, um, you know, it's aged over time and so it's, it's a lot of holes and it's not very secure, so in particular, it's going to be good for everything, but that one in particular, just for security reasons and looking better in the neighborhood. Um, you know, I think in terms of, you know, the other thing that we're looking at is, um, if you've seen in, you know, we're still working with Glenn about permitting around it, but wanted to get your feedback on, um, similar to Tread 1, we, we built a pergola. And so um, we have, it, we had, we've designed something that, that had the same look and feel of the building. And so it has that kind of corrugated steel roof it's got d um, dark wood. We used um, reclaimed wood for the benches. It's very thick to kind of bring that that feeling. And um, and we would and because it, um, tread one is actually cinder blocks as well. It's a very similar look to this building. So we would have a similar type of look in the entrance way. Um, you can see like our signage and all that type of stuff. It'll be a similar type of look. Uh, for tread one, we used more reclaimed wood with the quartz and steel letters. This time we'll mm -hmm. probably do more quartz and steel um, across um, the top. So we're still looking at the sign design, but that's the type of look and feel that we're looking for. <coughs> so how much of the new infill is going to be glass? Because it's unclear from this drawing. Oh, sorry. Um, probably, less, probably less than two feet, I would think. Or maybe around two feet. So just one panel? One panel. One panel across you don't, across want, you don't want it more open than that? No. Really? <laughs> <laughs> we actually want to keep, we're actually going to have um, uh, automatic, uh, we're going to have electronic blinds as well because for the fitness studio you want to have like an enclosed feeling most of the time. So most of the time we're actually not going to want light coming in, uh, but we wanted to have the glass for the look and feel to make it look prettier And the choice. Mm -hmm. And the choice too. Okay, the existing building, the uh, where the, the seat cover marked sign is, are those cutouts, are all three of them the same height, or are the two of them shorter than the... Two of them are shorter than the third. Okay. And uh, it, it would stay the same. Yeah. 
the um, when you replace the doors, are you going to maintain the setback from the fa facade or move them? Yes. Uh, move them out a little bit. Oh, uh, there will be a slight setback. It might be a little bit more forward than the existing doors, but it will still be set back from the building. Okay. Because we're going to want the doors to be a little bit thicker just for energy yeah. efficiency reasons. Yeah. Have you figured out what the material of the doors, the, the door panels will be? I have an idea. Yeah, I was going to say, um, we're probably going to use uh, synthetic material just so that they can correct that ASAP to make it look like it's a door, but it's all trim. So we'll all be trim. I'm the entity, by the way, the architect on the project. So the idea is that we're replacing it with the look of a panel door on the exterior using an ASAP material, basically, and probably MDO or something on the panels. The, okay. the lights, the windows on the tall door would be across the top. So it would look like there's, I think, four panels in there that will be glazed, um, probably two by <coughs> half or so for each of those panels. And you, you're looking to match the height of the windows across all three? Or? No, 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 no. There's only one door that will have the windows. The other two doors will be solid. Oh. It'll look like a solid garage door, essentially. Okay. As far as the pergola goes, we can't approve something that doesn't conform to zoning. But yeah, I think the idea cool. of the pergola is nice, but you'll have to figure out how you solve that I think that you problem. say it looks nice. We'll work with Glenn on it. On, on yeah. We just want to make sure like, you guys wouldn't find it offensive or something like that. No, I mean, the only thing I would think is, can you wrap it around the corner? Because the sign's going to be in the middle here, and there's a door to the left of that. And then people have to know that they have to go around to the back to get in. Yeah, that. Well, that door is being moved. The center door is getting moved. Yeah. There's a door that goes to the. Is it to the other? Yes, yeah, so egress door so only. Yeah, to the side. There's a uh, weight storage area for egress. Yeah. Right, but that's the door you'll see. That's correct. Yeah, yeah. they're going to oh, have okay, to do great. something yeah. creative. We yeah, we have to look at. We're getting a site plan that shows the offsets for the building, and at that point, we'll be able to make a better distinction as to what goes on in that area. Yeah. And if you could see the, the uh, as you're coming up the drive, you could see the pergola from the drive. Right. And the other thing that we'll be, you know, th that we're going to be doing is, uh, you can see that there's, that there's a container that's permitted on the property. We'll also paint that and, and do some type of mural on that to with local artists to just make it look better as well. <coughs> what about lighting? Um, I haven't thought about that yet. It'll probably, you know, I think there's lighting already there in the parking lot on the poles. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. So the only lighting you'll need is it would be behind the door, door. Yeah. Um, and along that pergola if we end up with that pergola. So that whole entrance has got to be really kind of thought about as a pergola. Yeah, so if we don't, if we're not able to do the pergola, then. Yeah. We have to make some changes. So that will include the lighting. How much of the pergola is over the setback, the whole thing? That, the, the probably a good portion. It's a 20 foot setback, and that building is actually on the setback. That corner of it is? Yeah. And what's next door? Is that residential? Or residential, is that yeah. Residential single, single family or double? Single family. Okay. It looks like this. It would be a lot prettier for them to look at a pergola, but we'll, we're going to work on that. <laughs> yeah, you'll have to work on that. Are you going to paint the whole front? Same color. Same color, yeah. 
So but, this, but we will be painting it. Okay. Repainting, repainting it, yeah. So the storage container is disappearing, staying? No, staying. Okay. That's too bad. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> How's that for that We part? agree. <laughs> we concur. <laughs> Does that belong to? We'll make it look nice, though. Gene, does that belong to the liquor store? The what? Storage container? The building owner, I believe. Yeah. And he has a permit for it. He does. It goes back to the early 90s. As mm. what? Just an accessory? <laughs> what? Yeah. Accessory of One of those. <laughs> okay. Okay. So be it. Questions from the public? Comments? Have your hours worked out yet? Um, yeah, yeah, we'll be opening at um, five, five or five. We hope we'll have to go to the board of selectmen. Right. Right. Yep. And then, how and then late we you instruct stay open? until about eleven, eleven thirty. Then okay. we go pack again at <coughs> eleven thirty. Till about eight. to worry about that telephone call at all or is that just their problem? I saw that. Um, is there any power on that pole? There's no power. Reading lights doesn't want anything to do with it. Of course uh, not. They gave me Comcast and Verizon's contact information which I've had zero light getting hold of the mm -hmm. There's no power though at all. Okay. okay. Can you state your name and address? I'm sorry, John Freitas. Oh, okay. Thank you. AKA <laughs> <laughs> All of us. <laughs> well paid, though. <laughs> yeah. So, how do you want to condition the ZBA portion of the pergola? Wrote condition regarding pergola design. I just didn't know if you guys were going to have any specific design directives or anything like that um, that they could take with them to the design board. Um, I mean, you can leave it out, and, or you could just say something very general, like you think that the idea of the pergola is a good one. Um, yeah, I mean, I'd be in favor of saying something like that. Yeah. I would, I would in encourage encourage it, I mean, does it make a, a big difference in terms of the, the site? In general, is the idea to that it's going to be the same style yes. as the, your other Correct. building? Yeah. against the neighbor's part. Yeah. And hopefully you saw it in tread one and we all we use only down lighting. So if there is lighting it will be down, not mm -hmm. it's on a timer. So it doesn't stay on mm -hmm. um, except an hour after we're open. Kay. And then it comes on until the morning. When the timer works. <laughs> <laughs> so just write something like C P D C is generally in favor of the pergola. I guess I would actually go even further in, right. in what you had said, Nick, is that um, it, it's tucked back in there. 
yeah. you're not going to see it until you're there, mm -hmm. right? Um, and <coughs> not necessarily to bring the pergola itself out, but if there's some sort of design feature that you can wrap around the corner without without making the garage look not like a, you know a garage, but still being able to you know to 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 know that there's there's something well even a, a, for example something the, back around the, the corner uh, um, something like fake paving a little walkway oh that's a great idea like so you could actually like make it look like we could paint it onto the onto the pavement and make yeah. it paint. look like a brick or something yeah. like that that's a yeah. good idea stamped concrete stamped concrete no, yeah. we'll put it over there too is because then we don't lose parking right if we put it in the front like we have tread one and we lose so many spots yeah, you just you just want something that's visible from the front. Right. Oh, I love that idea. Yeah. I'll think about it. So this is business B. You're allowed two signs. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What do you think you're going to do? You're going to put something on that on that standing sign because well. so, this would allow uh, you to do something. Okay. There. So we have we have two con we have two concepts. So th there's an there's an existing sign that's there right now that uh, um, for the seat cover mart. It's a big freestanding right. sign. We're going to have issues with zoning around that. That we're trying to get our. Under we're, I'm still researching what the rules are and writing ar around that and seeing if there's any way to get to keep it and to get grandfathered. And we have an artist in um, out of the artist asylum in Somerville that has some really cool ideas for it. So I, I think it could add a lot to that street, but obviously it has to be compliant. So we're looking at the laws and stuff like that. So if that doesn't work, it'll be a sign on the building that said it'll be a sign on the building. And we're actually thinking about a reverse sign. It's um, so it would be court and steel. The whole thing would be court and steel, a rectangle with tread on the mill carved out of it, and then it would have halo light. So not direct light coming up, but just halo light mm -hmm. behind it, underneath it. And then if we don't get the street sign, we'll do a blade on the side like we have a tread one. Yep. Okay. A little bit more description of what we are. Yeah. You know. Okay. Sounds good. Uh, move that the CPDC approve the minor site plan review decision for the project at 1113 High Street, tread on the mill. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Okay. okay. Good luck. Hey, thanks. These are great ideas. I appreciate it. Well, second with a question mark. <laughs> <laughs> So you mentioned the artist's senior living sign as a discussion as opposed to an approval. It's, it's a little hybrid approach. Um, it was unclear to me whether they had their master signage plan approved. I, don't, I was hoping you guys would remember. I couldn't figure it out from the files. Um, but what you're really reviewing tonight is their site sign. Um, and I've written a draft decision. In, um, you can conduct this like any regular application. Right. They're just not here because it was kind of a last minute. Yeah. But they thought they already had it approved. The site sign. They thought they had the master signage plan approved so that this was going to be like a. Um, uh, I, personally, I don't know. I I can't. I couldn't even imagine that we approved a master signage plan along with this. It. it um, well, I'm pretty sure that we didn't. Yeah. So we talked, we discussed. Because we would have had to talk about yeah, well, colors I mean, and um, uh, well, we discussed layout and stuff. The, we didn't uh, find the location. location. That jives with our files. Yeah. So. Yeah. I mean, there was, there was concern about the sign location because of the sight lines on the street and so on and so forth. Correct. Right. Uh, and we did, I'm pretty sure we, we came to agreement on 
where it is. Yeah, there's a the location is yep. indicated on the approved site plan, but beyond that, I didn't have any other information. Um, and that was just about the one um, monument sign. That's right. the only thing I ever remember talking about. So question, there's a red line between the uh, sidewalk and the sign. Signed to have a minimum of 12 feet from State Highway. The red line does not, the, the, where it's pointing to the sign is what we're talking about, not the red line, correct? Right. Right, we're not talking about the red line, no. The red line just shows the setback from the from right. Route 28. And I think that was so we'd have the sight lines. And the only other question I had was, where does the fence stop, and can you see both sides of the sign? Um, that's a very good question, Nick. Because there was an issue with the neighbor and the fence. Mm -hmm. Well, we had we oh, talked. That's us. That's us. <laughs> yeah, we talked about. They talked about the uh, scalloping down the fence. Yeah. But that would still be almost four feet high. If the, the sign but that seems we the we just found out about this. That seems to be going right where the fence is. That's supposed to be sloping down. That's what going to that diagram. Yeah. yeah. Well, the fence is on the property line, and the the sign is uh, most of uh, ten feet or more into the property from the boundary. That's behind the fence. The fence right now stops stops 16 feet from the sidewalk. Okay. Because they haven't sloped it down yet. It stops oh. 16 feet, and they're going to continue now and slope the rest of it down. Correct. To some distance, but not all the way so to the sidewalk. It was supposed to, it's supposed to go from eight feet down to about two feet. Okay. So the so the sign was, is um, on the diagram we have here is. 12 feet from the sidewalk. 12 feet? Yeah. Because so it's behind the fence then. Well, it's four No, it's well, really, it's further than that. It's 12 feet from the property line, so it's probably oh. called 14 feet from the... At How far is it from the sidewalk? Though? Probably 14 feet from the sidewalk. 12 feet from the sidewalk, 12. right? It says 12 feet from the right-of-way, the state highway right-of-way. Right, which is where the sidewalk... It, oh, no, not sidewalk, no. the sidewalk is in the right, right, way. Yeah. right. Call it another two feet. So yeah. there we go. You can zoom in on that. You can see what's going on. I don't know how much more clear it's going to get. <coughs> and does it say how high it is? Well, the, the sign, the face of the sign is four feet, and the front to back is is uh, eight feet. Four feet high, and it's on an eight foot, uh, an eight inch um, base. So it's four and fifty four inches high or so. So that's gonna right. that's gonna make it hard for us to get out of our driveway because we're not gonna be able to see what traffic's coming from the north. By what we by sloping the fence down to see now this now that's gonna block our, our sight lines. I don't think so. I mean, we have. I'm trying to remember what we said about the fence. Did we say? First it was work it out. Yes. I can run yes, we did. Right, we didn't. We just said slope it down, but we didn't say. Yep. And I think they met with you guys, yes, didn't they? Yes, did. And that's going to go from eight feet down to two feet. Yeah. Is it right. going to go from eight feet to two feet in one section? No. There's two. There's two sections left of the fence to be put up. But they stop because there's the existing construction fence there. Yeah. So they stop there, and they're supposed to mirror the fence that's there now. So we the fence that's there now goes from, our fence is six feet, goes from six feet down to about two feet in two sections. It goes from like six to four, and the next section goes from like four to two. In eight foot long sections, would yes. you say? Except the last fence section is only six feet. Okay, so it's 14 feet. Yeah, the last two feet got hit by mm -hmm. the sidewalk plow and taken up. <laughs> yeah, we shouldn't put so it back. They were gonna they were going to stop, I, we asked them to stop the fence two feet from the sidewalk so that wouldn't happen again. Oh, yeah. yeah, it looks like that's what they're proposing, so. But if that, well. if that fence is four feet high, when we come out of the driveway and we look to the left up to the north of Main Street, we're not going to, but right now we but, have a high time. Uh, it, but it shouldn't. It bring it down to it, two feet. It, it shouldn't because where you, if you look at where, let's say where their stop line is there, can, if I go up here, if you look at where their stop line is, right here, is that is that the stop line? 
Or probably right. the you you pull out to about the the yeah. um, the sidewalk, yeah. right? Yep. Yeah. Fronting the car there, your your view where you're si where you're actually sitting is probably right about there. So th this being set back 12 behind feet you. will be so will be <coughs> behind you. 12 feet from the sidewalk. That's the what it's saying right there. Yeah, minimum. Yeah. yeah. Oh, so right. this won't. Okay, yeah, that I won't be right there. Right yeah, that won't no, be in your way. 12 feet minimum. What right. doesn't make sense you're not see it is you're not going to see it coming Cause north because yeah. the fence is on the way. Is that going to be lighted? It is going to be lighted by two ground-mounted um, LEDs that point to the face of the sign. So it's not, you won't, I don't think it's going to be lighted. No. All right. Here's the reason I brought all that up. So when they finally realize that the other side of the sign is blocked, they're probably going to want to move it. <laughs> yeah, that's a good well, the might consider we'll the other side. Put a second one on the other. I mean, put it in the center. That's business for B, example. Right. Yeah. It has to follow business for residential. Yeah. Right. You can't have two freestanding signs. No, but they could put it in, in the center there. <coughs> they could. That's all. I'm just advising that I think at some point they're going to come back and maybe realize that they put it mm -hmm. in the wrong spot. It doesn't block their view because it's going to be behind the four foot section. Most of it. Yes, that's kind of weird that they would. Maybe I don't think they've not, rethought it. You don't think they changed their mind and they're not going to put a fence there? No. And then oh, no. They, 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 they have to do that. I hope so. <laughs> because they stopped. So I kind of hope so. Because that was talked before. You know, so I kind of hope that they're going to continue that fence and not think that that's. They have more flexibility with the sign than they do with the fence. The right. fence is required by the site plan decision. The sign location can be moved. They can come and talk to us about it. And since we've talked about it, if they do come back and want to move it to that center line, do we care? Do we want to just let them deal with this administratively? If it's the same sign but located on the island, as long I mean, as the it still site has to be 12 there. feet from the. Yes. So it yeah. might. I don't. It will hit the, they have a little driveway. Yeah, it's. Out. They're gonna have to figure that one out. Yeah, I mean that's. Are we not talking about the same thing? Yeah. yeah. So like, it's still gonna have to be 12 feet from the. So if you draw a, line, a parallel across, it's yeah. gonna be in the drive aisle. Well, but the top of this. Well, I mean, I think they'll, they'll ask to reduce this. So well, that I think. Where does that 12 foot requirement come from? The state. No, that's probably no. our no, probably in the ours. decision. It it yeah. references the state. The fact that it's a state highway is the reason that it has to be. What is it? 100 feet? What do you have to have, John? What's the sight line? It all depends on the speed. It was t so. at one time they told us it was 12 feet. The fence was supposed to be 12 feet from some sight line. Because that at, at first they weren't going to. The fence was actually going to stop further back mm -hmm. during one of the other meetings, and then. We said our fence goes all the way to the sidewalk, mm -hmm. which they said wasn't right. But I, I mean, I don't know. The fence was there when we bought the house. It's always been there. Mm -hmm. They said something about off the center of the, the center of the road. There was some measurement. Yeah, you can't put your fence beyond the right of way. The right of way is not always at the back of the sidewalk. Right. That plan seems to show it several feet behind the sidewalk. Right. Yeah. So wherever well, that... Well, there's, there's stakes right at the sidewalk. They, the property was all staked out. Correct, but they may... That may be the final way. No, they came, across, they came across the front of the house, and they staked across the front. So I, I would imagine that's where... It's on my... It's right at the sidewalk. They yeah. put okay. metal stakes in the ground. But I could be wrong. Hmm. <clears throat> Well, in either case, I mean, the, the sign that they're proposing is is less than 60 inches to the top of the sign, so. And 54 inches to grade. In, the, in our sign bylaw, did we have, because there's, there's some, and I don't have it here with me, but we had some specific requirements about the differences for monument signs in residential mm -hmm. districts mm -hmm. and um, the 
the placement. I thought there was an issue about the placement of them. And I'm just wondering if that's where this 12 feet. I know there's a 40 foot requirement, um, which came up for the, for the library sign. The 12 foot requirement I'm not familiar with. Um, Let's see. That was that 20 feet on the side. And that one they do not comply with, but um, this location is on the approved site plan, so I don't know if it was discussed at the time. Well, the monument sign is considered a freestanding sign. Yes. Yeah? Freestanding sign. Yeah. <laughs> so it requires a special permit uh, in a residential district. a part of an approved site plan that was what was trumping that's how I thought it worked <coughs> well business or commercial signs in residential zoning district says that they shall follow business B zoning district regulations except that such signs shall be set back a minimum of 20 feet from any other lot which is basically the sidelines. Mm -hmm. And that's the, not such in this case. Right, but the reason that I, I figured you guys might have had the discussion when you approved the site plan showing this location, which doesn't meet this requirement. If I remember it right, we, we couldn't do both the 12 and the 20 because we're into the parking lot. Right. And we felt that the sight lines were the more important issue. Yeah, right, the fence definitely. Was gonna, Fence is protecting the neighbor from the sign. Basically, there was no other place to put it. No. Right. And you can see that if it goes to the center island, in order for them to see it, then it has to be less than 12 feet. And I'd be okay with that as long as the sight lines are still okay. And they look like they would be because you'd, you'd still have to pull past it. And both driveways are one way. Yeah. Right. I mean, so they, can, they can put it in the center if they just turned it 90 degrees. Hmm? Then you still only see one side. One side. Yeah. You must leave it where it <laughs> no, is. No, and you have to be like right next to it, like looking. <laughs> yeah, well, that's the way it is at Wingate. Wingate is going that way. Right. Yeah, I think I think it's safer if the uh, sign is visible for this location, so people don't just all of a sudden appear at it and then try to take a left-hand yeah, turn exactly. on it right. like 40 miles an hour. Yeah, well, that would never happen. Right. <laughs> in the summer. Right. Summer in the yeah. Um. Did you see the sign, by the way? No. Right here. Would you like to? <laughs> there. Uh, presuming that it's the um, the model on the top, which has the the A and the Artis. It's just the top. It's not the brick piers on the bottom, mm -hmm. and it sits on right concrete base. Mm -hmm. There's a, this is like what it's gonna sit in. Concrete base, is what it says. Um, and that concrete base is under ground. Mm -hmm. Only the eight inches of it, so there you go. Right, so eight oh, inches so of it. it's pretty low to the ground. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Right. I mean, the, the, they say the top of the sign is at, at uh, 54 inches. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's not tall. And they're only proposing one light fixture on each side. Mm -hmm. Chris and Lisa Lespina. Okay. 1082. 
Great, thank you. this one through. I were just talking that they could actually put it on the northbound, on the okay. northbound North. curb as well, if they could figure it out there. Mm -hmm. Here, let me. <coughs> Where are we? Right there for the trees. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like right over. There. Where it says one-way yeah. sign to the left of that. Like over here. Yeah, somewhere yeah. on there. Yeah, that would seem. That's where the entrance. Is. And it wouldn't yeah. be blocked so easily blocked by the fence. <clears throat> the thing is, if they've already wired this, <clears throat> I don't know how far they've gone with the parking lot. I, didn't I don't know. <clears throat> I noticed the building, but I didn't look at the pavement. There's the first coat of pavement is down. So they may already have run the they conduit they're, they're to this location. Now. Mm -hmm. Okay, then they probably ran the yeah, conduit. Sure they have. I, mean, I can ask Alan. Yeah. Ask him if he wants yeah. to reconsider, otherwise yeah. you can put it there. I don't care if you can't see the other side, it's yeah. his problem. Now, he also may come back and ask not to put that section of the fence up. Well, that will be that noticed well, on, a, before. on an agenda. Went, from last, well, a couple of years ago, they were talking to stop the fence two or three sections back from the sidewalk. Now, why do you feel you need those last two sections of fence? Right. I mean, the parking lot's there. Yeah, gives us privacy. I, I, I think the discussion I mean, was at the very least I mean, it right should now, go to the edge of the last parking s space, yeah. mm -hmm. which, right, the, yeah, which, the, which is right the in front of where the sign is anyhow. I mean, because mm -hmm. right now it looks kind of stupid, to be honest, if it stops where it stops at 8 feet, because it's just like... Mm. Just kind of ends. Right. Mm -hmm. Ends and then... Well, no. I mean, it's, it's clear that, that we wanted to. to uh, well, right now it's about it's two sections back from the sidewalk, so it's 16 feet about from the sidewalk. Yeah. But in terms of okay. the, the sign, I think we're all set. Yeah. So uh, the only thing that I noted earlier was that the <coughs> permit application has different numbers than the. Sign itself. The permit application says it's six inches off the ground and 48 inches to the top, but it's actually eight inches off the ground and 54 inches to the top. So we would just note that somewhere so that the building inspector didn't get. Yeah, I'll, I noted that on my official file version, okay. which is the one I'll give them once okay. all this is said and done. This is the one I'll give to the building division. Okay. So what am I going to? What are we? You can stamp? stamp the actual image. Um, so yes, stamp those. Um, okay. And actually, there's a couple more. Yeah, and those. All of those? Yeah. And what about lighting? Do we need to stamp any of this? You, yeah, it's probably not a bad idea. approve the certificate of appropriateness 
for the proposed signage at 1100 Main Street, Park Senior Living. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Discussion? Um, uh, yeah, only, only, um, list the material the only place that we talk about the specific location of the sign we don't talk about it in the certificate we only note the um, the sheet mm -hmm. do you want me to say it specifically yeah, three, one, this one. yeah. Okay. and I'm just wondering if in the finding yeah. since what three quarters of the discussion was about in the finding okay. um, yeah. we should have a finding that it's Position does show on um, such and such a diagram, right? Yeah, set at 12 feet back from <coughs> okay. um, the state highway right of way okay. on the southern side of the property. Got it. Okay. Approval as amended. Is there a second? Check. Sure. All in favor? that the expectation is that they're going to build the fence yeah. in the location yeah. where they said they well, told us before like they For example, that. I'll do a site inspection before they get their senior vote, and I'll make sure that what they've agreed to is... I, I guess... That's what before we do. They get the heads the, up. Well, yeah, before they get the sign this, or as they get this, so that they don't cry foul, oh, we've done all this work and we can't go change things around now. Well, that would the sooner the better. Right? Okay, I can. You, you know what I'm saying? To, to um, yeah, just give a heads To up. Nick's point, yeah. yeah. Right. Okay. You guys want a break for a few minutes? Yeah. Yeah. You have to get a pen that works. Mm -hmm. Both my pens are like. Mm. At the end of their life. Extra. Do you have it's a good one? Oh, no, these are mine. I know. We've only got some. My pens. Um, it's like. I don't know. Public hearing continuation is supposed to be We can. Yeah, but does it have to start again? I don't know. You can definitely start talking about something before. Because this is like a continuation. Yeah. I mean, I think you didn't repost it. No. Um, I'll just grab a pen that works. sit here for this meeting.
next up is continuation of the public hearing for zoning bylaw amendments for the 2016 town meeting in November. And I guess we'll start with our friend, the sign bylaw. Uh, so last week, Julie and Tony and I got together and went over comments from town council and the other ones that Tony and I had and we truly compiled everything to one version which I think is what you see now in front of you. Right and so just to clarify Ray and I have the same initials so um, <laughs> my <laughs> comments are the light blue ones. There's, I think, the ones that are, some rays still linger in here and they're brown. Okay. Mine are the blue ones. So I think that when we finished our working session, um, we had not addressed the table. We just received the comments from you guys. Um, and so we didn't, hadn't had a chance to look them over. But I think since then, this table reflects uh, at least Julie's best interpretation of, <laughs> of what those edits were. I didn't take them all, but I took the ones I thought were okay. clear and helpful. I'm trying to think of what we had at that meeting that we, um, that we were still getting hung up on. Uh, but we can just go through these if you want. And some of them you'll notice that we just said something like, we like this here or we want this here. Um, because we really are thinking about who the end user is on this code. And it's not us. It's not me or you. And you can parse the legal language and I can understand the code language, but it's the person coming in for a sign app that doesn't know what they're looking at. So I think if we're a little wordy, that's okay. Um, and if we're gonna duplicate language, which I know you're not uh, in favor of, then we need to make sure we do it right. If we're gonna have a list of things that belong, uh, that, that we have both in the table and the text, we're gonna have to make sure that we, we get it right. If we do that, I don't remember what we did. Let's see. Should I just scroll to just keep scrolling down and then so you? So, in keeping with that idea, since my recommendation was to take 8.1.4 check it against <coughs> there is another provision in the zoning bylaws already that duplicates this. Is it in, is it identical? Did anybody check it? So that in the in So we added a sentence to the beginning that says signage is regulated to, to distinguish it. So that, that's the reason that we have that in here, is to say signage is regulated by zoning district and to, highlight, and to mention these other sections. Are you asking if the rest of the blue in that paragraph is consistent with wherever else we have a definition of zoning district that's applicable throughout, yes. Okay, what section is that? So should we just change the title? Establishment of Districts 3.0. Or Signs by Zoning District or something? Yeah, signage by zoning district or sign by zoning districts. Signs by zoning district. Which we yeah. might have further down. Yeah, I thought well, we already actually. had that section. by zoning district. <laughs> um, why not just like 
signage regulation, is that not it? Section three. What I'm referring to is in section three point one. Three point one. Would you say in applicability of C section three point one for zoning districts? So ideally, we're going to say something that zoning districts are shown on the official map. a reference rather than the sentence that's there. I'd just like to see a reference in uh, zoning districts that are established in section 3.1. Full stop. Like at the very beginning? Right. Okay. So, no, no, no. You can say it's done by, you can keep that first sentence. Just get rid of all the blue. Okay. And, and just say, Do we mention the PUD, PRD, mm -hmm. Smart Growth Districts, other mm -hmm. where? Those are all there. Further down? In 3.1? No, but I mean like. So remember the reason, what, one of the reasons why we spent a year and a half or two years worth of effort to go through the entire zoning bylaw is to make it f usable um, and to, um, with all due respect, to, to then start another section that says we're going to regulate this by going and oh you have to go through this section um, go look at go reference this other section over here and then you have to interpret that versus I know this may not be legally the best way to do things but we get in so much trouble here because I mean in the past this was not readable um, so I think it's a balance of both of being legally correct and user friendly, and I don't want to make I want to make sure that we're do we're doing both because the two are are we can't do both. We can't. I mean, right? my concern would be someone who's in a downtown smart growth district looks at the sign bylaw and sees no mention of the downtown smart growth district and thinks that there's no regulation right, right. so th that's why i think it's good to have a reference here I, i'd like to add raised line to the second sentence after signage is regulated according to zoning districts zoning districts are established by section 3.1 i'm thinking ahead this is all going to become some smart hyperlink document right all these links will be live and you'll be able mm -hmm. to just click on this thing and get back and forth between the sections so I don't have a problem with putting that in there but I agree with Julie that we need to mention these other sections so that they're aware of it um, can we do some legal verbiage here or legal legal bias you can't they can in the sense of they're just saying the signage is regulated um, per zoning district as shown on the official map. So basically put the reference into the reference to say that the, the zoning districts as described in blah 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 and shown on the, on the map. It says that. Well, it says the second part. Yeah. Zoning districts are as shown on the official zoning map. But, but, if, you, the, the but if you just take out the word R, you say the zoning districts as shown, I think you will uh, eliminate the duplication or the, the hazard. You mean basically delete from here all the way to here? Like all this? I can't. No. Just the word R, right? No, just the word just R. Well, I just added this sex okay. section. I would just put that after. Combine the first two sentences the way David said, and you move that to the, to the second sentence. What right here, like mean? as established in section. Yeah. yeah. And shown. And shown. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> 
That's a very long sentence now. <laughs> we don't have any of those in our own zone by law. <gasps> Do we change this to divisional or add it? I was going to say signage is regulated according to zoning districts, period. Zoning districts are established in section 3, period. That's what, yeah, that's what we kind of had. So should I <coughs> change it back? I think it's more clear with it being two shorter sentences. Yeah. Can you zoom in so that we're using oh, the full width sure. of the Oh, sure. Sorry. Full width of the uh, screen. Does that work with Control Plus? No. Bottom, bottom right hand column. Oh. Just yeah. tell me when is good. Is One that more. enough or more? I think you have a little more room. There you go. Okay. So for the reader, we were just saying it might be easier to have a couple of short sentences as opposed to the long ones. Something like signage is regulated according to zoning districts, period. Zoning districts are established in section three, period. Well, the, the trouble is that the splitting the sentences is defining it twice. If, if the... Um, It's it's <coughs> assertive twice. Mm. It's gonna be a long night. <laughs> Especially since the next part of it, which says that it's on file with the engineering department and the town clerk's office and the town website, as opposed to three point two, which says that it's on file with the town engineer who shall supply copies to the town clerk, the town planner, but Building inspector for appeals by CBDC. You don't want to say that the town clerk. Maybe we get rid of that sentence. Mm. That part of that. So the problem is you, you say it's on file with the town clerk and, and it's on the website. So then there's a mistake. And what's on the website isn't right or or whatever. You have said that you're being you're you're being bound by what's on the website. Not a good place to be. No. Why don't we take so it out, take this out? The, the official copy should be one place, which is fine, the engineering department. And then All right, get rid of that. And then I get rid of and the town clerk's office and all that other stuff. Should we and we should change department to division, no? Mm-hmm. Or you could use the, the town the engineer. Town engineer there as, we go. It, as it says in, in three point two. <laughs> Even better. <coughs> okay. And then instead of saying Reading has also adopted, just say note that Reading has adopted. all agreed to that adult language portion of it. Yeah, that, we, can't, we can't have that. Uh, the, the, so that's the, problem, the problem is, I don't know what, I, I don't know where you, what you, the standard of obscenity is the standard of obscenity, and commonly considered obscene says something different to me. thought where we were before was we were just not going to um, uh, try to define um, obscenity at all. We were just going to use it. But 
it is, um, it, you're defining something which you're then going to prohibit, which is constitutionally protected. That is adult language that is commonly considered obscene but doesn't meet the legal standard. And so, so do we say matter that meets the legal standard of obscene? You can say that. What was the language that they provided us with last time? That's yeah. what they had. We took out, you had crossed out the definition and said something like matter that is considered obscene. Yeah, we had it further down to somewhere. Right, you have the, the oh, under prohibited. You didn't like the definition. You said it was too. Um, <laughs> no, we had agreed, we discussed it and we agreed that we don't need to define it because it's already been dis defined, dis right. defined elsewhere and, there, and yeah. that we can rely on that. Yes. Right, so we right. didn't need to define it. So, do, do we need even need to have it in here as a capitalized? Well, the question no. Well, the question is, so what I thought we where I thought we were two weeks ago was we were not going to define obscene. We were just going to have a place where it said obscene signs are prohibited. End of story. This resurrects the term adult language and then prohibits signs that have adult language. The definition of obscene, you didn't like because it was too. That is obscene if taken as a whole, it appeals to the prurient interest of the average person applying the contemporary standards of the county where the offense was committed, depicts or describes sexual conduct in a patently offensive way, and lacks serious literary, artistic, political, or scientific value. That's, I mean, that's heavy duty, but so. <laughs> we don't need that. <laughs> no, I didn't have any problem with the actual definition. We, we just felt we didn't need it in here, remember? Right, okay. Because so it was don't. It's established and defined. Don't use adult defined. language either. Just, okay. use a, just don't have, just strike that. So we can use the word obscene in the code. Yes. Would we capitalize it? No. Okay. So take out adult language. Take out the, uh, the definition of adult language. And where a, the term adult language appeared in the text, by the down change it to obscene. Signs that contain obscenity? Signs that are obscene? They contain obscene matter. Obscene matter. That's what right? it's matter. Okay. That's the only place to be. Okay. Page two. Forgetting something. No, I didn't. Well, luckily, Blake is here. <laughs> Says he has some. Great. No. I didn't even get a chance to read them. Okay, so you, you asked that the last time the AG had provided guidance on yep. sign by laws. Which are These are the, this is the first two. Conquered and uh, last word. It's just going to make me angry with the law again. <laughs> no, because it, uh, well, only if you are angry with the part that says, um, if you if you have a question, uh, consult town council. Because that's really what the advice is. Uh, but there is a little bit of a discussion in there about billboards, which suggests which one, Concord the, or uh, Stone? Stone. Oh. Which suggests that that you need to regulate billboards in a way that is not inconsistent with the way they're regulated at the state level. So, I mentioned to Julie earlier today that there seemed to be an issue with you know, the three kinds of advertising signs, billboards, and off-premises signs. We've got three different terms with almost the same definition.
So you see a billboard is a large off-premises sign, basically. But an off-premise sign could be a small two-by-four sign mm -hmm. at the top of a driveway. If you want to distinguish between those two, that's fine, but you just need to be a little clearer than just it's large. Well, billboard is a smaller group of off-premises signs. Off-premises signs include billboards and other signs. I'm not saying that. Says, which is located, including any outdoor advertising, billboards, signs affixed to vehicles, animated sign. Mm -hmm. What was the other one? Advertising? So. Mm -hmm. We don't have that. Outdoor advertising. Do we use that language anywhere? Outdoor advertising mm -hmm. beyond here? I think we do. Uh, here, do you want me to? Search. Yeah. Outdoor. It's in the definition of billboard. We say outdoor board. Um, and we say outdoor advertising. That says the Office of Outdoor Advertising. Oh, right. Um, this combines outdoor advertising and billboard. Okay, so the, the term outdoor advertising probably could get rid of only appears in the definition of yeah, I think I agree with that. Mm -hmm. I think that the other mm -hmm. two capture that and this is a little more content based even though IMLA kind of use that language. So you agree with yeah. getting rid of outdoor advertising? I'd be okay with getting rid of outdoor advertising because I think the other two signs pick up on that. Yeah. And frankly, every other sign is outdoor advertising anyways. Right. Right. <laughs> we don't regulate indoor signs. We can't, well, we can't regulate <laughs> So content. basically a bill, so, other than the word, see where it's at in the definition of billboard. The distinguishing characteristic is that, is that subject to the jurisdiction of the Office of Outdoor Advertising. So um, instead of saying which may require a permit from, just say which is subject to regulation by. Right, and then that means a billboard is what they regulate, and outdoor advertising is everything else. Well, it pl plus a billboard. What about, so which one are we, are we we're not getting rid of? We're getting rid of. Is oh. is uh, okay, so we're getting rid of outdoor advertising. Getting rid of outdoor okay. advertising. We're saying a billboard is whatever the state says a billboard is, which ironically is filled with content-based regulation. <laughs> That's the state's problem. <laughs> presumably they will fix that at some point. Mm -hmm. um, <coughs> So what we have is off-premises signs, which constantly we can regulate, and billboard is a subset of off-premises signs. We should probably get rid of this. Okay. So then in, in the definition of off-premises signs, you can just get rid of the words outdoor advertising. See, in the third line, including any outdoor advertising billboard, you just oh, yeah. can say including any billboard. Okay. All right. That's user friendly because it's two words shorter. <laughs> I think we're still looking at zero right now because we, <laughs> we don't. <laughs> fewer words does not necessarily mean more user friendly. No, if, if you were, <coughs> it just means less printing. Well, that's all right. Okay. okay. The <laughs> hesitantly we ask again the definition of bulletin board. What is a permanent non-electric electronic sign uh, for posting temporary signs that is not on a property owned or operated by a charitable, educational, religious? Blah, blah, blah. 
what is one that is not on one of these properties? Yeah. Uh, right now, the definition of more than void. Oh, I see. Is it requires it to be. That's right. On yeah. property owned by a uh, charitable educational or religious institution. Well, uh, just in normal uh, specification speak. I mean, this is putting the regulation into the definition. So there's 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 a, either a missing definition, or uh, the regulation should be somewhere else. We talked about this. We got hung up on this, right, Tuesday? Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, last week too. Yeah. We started trying to figure out what this was. And okay, so you. I mean, the bulletin board is already taken. Um, Dover member uses, which right. is not some, but not all the things yeah. mentioned here, right. and exempted them completely right. from right. the sign. So, no need to put them in this definition because they're right. But maybe what it makes sense is. Um, Well, Tell me this. Do you, there, this reads like, um, like what you had in mind was the thing that is goes in front of the church that has the uh, the topic of the sermon for this week, it's as opposed to a as opposed to what I would consider a bulletin board, which is something that anybody can come and you know babysit and advertise their babysitting and, and guitar lessons. And Stuff. Yeah, we didn't think these would be publicly accessible, but they would be accessible to whoever the user allowed mm -hmm. post something yeah. in. Yeah, well, I mean, so that's, that's, is that what yeah. the latter of what you have in mind? I think because we were thinking it was something more enclosed, right? Yeah, it's more of a frame that can hold multiple signs or even uh, applied letters. It could be anything that happens inside this box. Uh, I don't. I think that the language about where it's located is carrying over though from the old code and we just mm -hmm. haven't removed it for fear of making a change. Yeah. Well, the thing is that the reader board or menu board uh, is, I mean, you could, your, your standard um, movable letter, bulletin board, could be uh, regulated on, as a reader board. That is a reader board, I think we yeah. have that. Yeah. Yeah. That's specifically just letters that yes. move around, as letters, opposed to letters, this. caricature, illustration. This mm -hmm. can be a, an aluminum framed box with a glass front, and then you post the uh, what's going on for the church fair, or you post the guitar lessons, or you post some other junk. So it gets filled up within the the borders of this box. You can have anything happening in it, since we don't care what happens inside it. I don't have a problem removing the language about the other where it's where it's used, and just keeping it as a permanent non-electronic sign for posting temporary signs. But I think we need to add some language in there about But is the bulletin board itself is not really a sign unless it has temporary signs on it, right? It's really just a thing for holding the yes. signs, kind of like a marquee. Right. So maybe we... But you're not going to... The point there is that you're not going to approve mm -hmm. every... Right, little every sign that goes sign. in it, so you approve the bulletin mm. board right. so that you can right. Right. change those out whenever. So, <coughs> you know, if they're mounted on walls away from a sight edge, that's one thing. I, I thought mm -hmm. that there was mention about mounting something on a wall. Did we remove that? Where was that from? We tried to figure out where these would be. If they're on the site, then they have impact to traffic and pedestrian safety potentially if they're large enough. If they're mounted on a wall of the building, you know, you care a little bit less about them except if someone comes in with a big scheme and you want to look at his master signage because it has to do with aesthetic. But we don't care about the content inside. The, the problem, however, is that in our table of uses, mm -hmm. we have them as um, 12 square feet. 12 square feet allowed with no sign permit required. Right. 
Well, I mean, I'm, I'm, which I'm, if which means that you could put them anywhere. anywhere, and you could change, you could put them on the side of your building, <laughs> and you could have. Um, you could constantly change the messages and beside behind them you could you could actually fill it up with your own temporary sign okay, but, uh, uh, before we so that doesn't quite that doesn't quite work no it actually makes sense if you read the definition the way it stands these, right. these are all Dover protected right yes so you uh, non-profit yes. not necessarily yeah. Dover so then no well, one can, okay. not just anyone can do it you have right. to meet that non-profit you have to meet test. that non-profit yes and you wouldn't be subject to it anyways, right? Well, some of them, but charitable <laughs> is where it goes beyond right. Dover. Or in, in the public body. Yeah. Well, I mean, you could change it to, say, public bulletin board and then prohibit it. I mean, it's... it's but I don't think we want to prohibit it. No, you're saying have two definitions. One, <laughs> public bro, bro, a bulletin board that's prohibited, and um, and well, I'm not sure that we need a definition for the the non for the protected ones. I mean, well, only some of them are protected. So, the Dover Amendment and the government uses are exempt, but the charitable is not. What would be what's an example of a charitable use? Rotary? I mean, I don't know. I, I don't know. I'm. I'm. What? I see. Yes, right. So, so the Rotary Club, if they have a building, the Elks often do. Mm -hmm. Right. I don't know what you've got in Reading, but um, uh, those are, those are the Masons. Those are charitable organizations. Right. Um, uh, they're not Dover members though, because they're not religious or educational. Right. Well, that's why I was I was trying to figure out a definition that doesn't specify, you know, who owns it or operates it. What if we just said by a nonprofit? But that's important in the that's imp that's in the regulation. No. No, it's important as the def as the definition of the bulletin board. Okay, so if a for-profit. <coughs> Company, restaurant, whatever comes in and wants to put a bulletin board, they're not allowed to. Nope. Is that what we're saying? That's right. Because we don't have it listed as being right. allowed anywhere. Right. So if we keep the definition with this, we can say no permits required of the maximum square yeah. footage in it. Just have to clean up the definition to make sure that we're pointing to the right group. What is the right group? Just nonprofit? Does that cover it? Because Dover is exempt. Mm -hmm. Government is exempt. Nonprofit or otherwise exempt. Well, educational isn't no, necessarily no, nonprofit. Educational is no, Dover. Yeah. Right. It is if it's Dover. But what if you're not Dover? What if you're a for profit educational. Oh, like, Sorry, awesome. like a dance school? Mm -hmm. Wait, Dover? Protected uses can be for profit. No, no. So I'm saying if you're a school, like a dance school, and you're regular business making a profit, then you would qualify. No. Under educational. The way it's written now. Yeah. Right. We were saying nonprofit. Or, yeah. But non she's saying nonprofit doesn't cover. Doesn't cover every educational use. Right. So if your I dance would get school. I everything except. I would get rid of all of those where it's charitable, educational, and religious, and just say nonprofit. So if you're running a dance school for profit and I'm running one as a nonprofit, you're entitled to something different than I am. That's right. Yeah. I don't, that, I don't well, get anything. You do. It seems a little off, which is why I would think putting educational in there, whether you're for profit or nonprofit, in my mind, makes more sense. So is this why we spelled it out? Yeah. I just leave it the way it is. It could be a battle battle royale of dance schools. We've seen some of that already. <coughs> I thought we were going to change. You want to leave it the way it is. 
it's charitable <coughs> comma, right? Mm -hmm. I think for what it is, it's probably not worth spending a whole lot of time uh, yeah, on. Yeah, I don't even, we were yeah. saying we don't want to regulate it. We told them no permits required. Right. Yeah. And as a light, I guess they have the electrical permit. That's, do we have to say that? No, right? No. That's different. That's that's, yeah, that's different. Um, if we change it too much, then we're ch making a change that we weren't going to make this year. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Okay. Never mind. <laughs> you, want, you want it to be the charitable comma. Yes. It is. That's the way it reads. Right. Charitable comma. So, so that a, a right. Yep. A not a for profit educational is institution is, okay. is counts. Right. Yep. Right. Okay. Okay. Under okay. page three. Page fifteen. <laughs> <laughs> Through this. In an hour uh, the feather banner issue was, I think, that we were flipping feather banner wind flag right. to wind banner or feather flag or something like that. Just beyond. So we just followed through and, and uh, wrote them all right. the Right. So that's why I just made that note. We reordered it. Okay. Ray, did you have any issues with electronic sign? We actually, we kept the text you suggested. Perfect. So then it's perfect. <laughs> <laughs> um, and what about government sign? We just shortened everything here and then we gave the specific. Later on when we exempt them, we speak more specifically Should about Should it them. be traffic control signs and or devices? Because traffic control devices to me is stoplights. Yes, as opposed, as opposed to, to all the MUTCD signs. Or that irritating green kid with a flag, which I think should be prohibited. <laughs> green kid? <laughs> the irritating green kid with the flag. Oh, it's <laughs> yellow. <laughs> I mean, that guy, it's like, and it's like this. Right. You mean the little thing that protects the kids in the street? <laughs> oh. <laughs> 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 Telling you to slow down. It's in my way when I'm trying to. <laughs> <laughs> when I'm trying to speed through a side neighborhood street. Yeah, I, I don't understand why this isn't doesn't fall under the you know you're not allowed to put a private stop sign there. <laughs> but that's no. just me. Okay, moving along to page four. Right, so the only other thing there is where it's the reference to the local government. You really need to say the town of Reading. Okay. Should I say it up above too? Maintained by the federal state or the town of Reading? So Middlesex County need not apply. <laughs> Middlesex County doesn't exist. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> blew that up about 12 years ago. Is that all? Merely a geographic <laughs> designation. <laughs> how do you, you know what court to go to? <laughs> do we see right there halo lighting? I think we need a space between those two lines. Mm -hmm. On page four, under instructional or directional signage, we left that in for discussion. Okay, so. Um, so right now you've defined this term in terms of its 
function, a sign that has a purpose um, secondary to the use of the log, which is located. So Blake and I are afraid of the word directional just because that was the specific sign that was invalidated in, <laughs> in the read case was a directional sign. So should we just well, you could call it instructional signage, and I'd be okay with that. But I think the key feature that you, you're trying to get at is that these are the signs that somebody is requiring the property owner to have, like as part of site plan review, um, or as part of a special permit. And then these will be so. So uh, that's the the concept that seems to be missing from this right now. Hmm. So if you change the in the final sentence, if you change the word enforce to meet, it says required safe flow, blah, 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 or to meet government regulations. No, because the sign bill is a government regulation. I think we're talking about signs that say stop and no parking and. Enter here. Yeah. Mm. Right. These are all sign, but they're not enforcing government regulations. They are. They're, because these are on-premises signs. They're to maintain the, well. What about two-hour parking? What if we just take out that or to enforce government regulations part? Wait, um, Hardis Properties, right, the two driveways, the exit driveway, is they required to have a stop sign by DOT? I think the state got involved in that. I think that that was something that came up. So I don't know what the rules are on that. So if you're exiting a driveway onto a, a commercial driveway onto yeah, no, there isn't State anywhere Island. else no, I can think you're of. You're really not required. I mean, typically you're not required to unless they that was something specific. Specific to that yeah. one. It seems like a good idea sometimes, I know. though. Okay, so they might get involved if they felt there was a sight line issue at the mm -hmm. crest in the hill. Well, I think probably the issue is the length of the approach, the the driveway approach to the road. Okay. The the concern I have with, with the current wording is that the sign can't enforce anything. It it can notify, it can Oh okay. So Blake a few iterations ago I I suggested definition a sign that is required by a state or local permit or approval for the safe flow of vehicular or pedestrian traffic or otherwise to protect public safety health and the environment so the key features are somebody who is responsible for protecting public safety health and the environment or it has required you to have this sign I actually, I like that in the sense that um, it, it puts the, um, so it, it, tur <laughs> it turns it some way because you know that a lot of people will come in and say, um, uh, we're going to put all of these, um, <laughs> all these signs that hmm, maybe look like they're branded, um, you know, the same colors all over the place on our site enter, exit, da, da 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 versus just the tone of that says, no, we tell you, you need an enter and an exit sign. I mean, mm -hmm. it's, it's semantics, but mm -hmm. I like the tone that says it's required by us that you have an enter and an exit sign or a no parking here sign or. Is it or approval or for approval? Uh, the way he wrote it was, it's, it's required by a local permit or approval. Local permit or approval, okay. Yeah, I think. Um, and then, or otherwise to protect public safety of the Okay. Sold. Okay. Okay, we did.
did off premises and we did outdoor advertising. Mm -hmm. Yep. portable sign, I know we keep fighting about this, but it's in the existing bylaw, correct? Yes, it is, and it's basically the same yeah. wording. You're not fighting with me. <laughs> you just said, <clears throat> I just pointed out that the term only appears once, but that's all right. If you want to define it anyway, that's fine. I think we're going to leave it because we don't want to make this change right okay. now either. Figure out exactly how to define mm -hmm. what that is I'm later. very easy about yeah, is is relief sign the right term? Because these are sometimes called inter integral signs. Yeah, that's what it was, and we didn't like that word. Okay. <laughs> so we changed it to relief. We it's we not, not talked a lot about sign. <laughs> that. Like, basically, it's made of the same material as. I mean, the you could use the word sign. integral in the definition. These are True. these are cast into the material or carved hmm. into the material. Well, I mean, this, the uh, Bread and Cooperative Bank, I mean, has the... Mm -hmm. Not anymore, right? Did we they covered over it. Yeah. Did they cover over it? Oh, wait. The, yeah. Well, some of it's there. They were supposed to fill that in. I remember he asked me if he needed a permit to fill in the mortar. Oh, last time I saw it, they just had, like, two pieces of stuff that over it to cover it up. Hmm. I haven't seen it, but I can't tell what they didn't okay. ever cover it. Oh, he... Called and he asked if it was considered a structural component, if he, he was going to need a building permit to, to fix it, to fill it in. Mm -hmm. So, <coughs> okay. I haven't gone down to check, but. Okay. <laughs> All right, so we're questioning whether the term relief sign appears anywhere in the Bible. <laughs> here just in the definition yeah. let me see what so in if it's not integral used anywhere then you don't really need a definition right so we no. can just lose okay. it it relevant? Are we on page six now? <laughs> we oh, are. Right along. Mm -hmm. Well, here we, we've got the completely within an enclosed building, not exposed to view, et cetera. We're not touching that this year. Okay. <laughs> even, even, even though it's Signs located completely within an enclosed building and not exposed to the roof on the street are out of the definition of signs, so it's sort of internally you know, consistent. It's fine. Okay. Page seven. Mm -hmm. It's an image. Mm -hmm. Excellent Page image. Eight. <laughs> is where we kept all of the language for those government signs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right here. Whereas previously we just kind of identified them very quickly. Page nine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. This is a touchy matter here. Which one? flags. <laughs> Are we there yet? You said page nine. Oh yeah, at the very bottom. What happened in that last one where it's contradictory? We accepted above. your edits for the contract issues. Yeah, okay. Can we, um, I'm going to go back to page eight. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. 
C signs on property occupied by uses protected by MGL Chapter 40A Section 3. Can we put parentheses Dover Amendment? Yes. Sure. I mean, so that until they all get hyperlinked, we don't need to then go mm -hmm. and look up our MGL code to f make sure that um, that's in fact what that is. What's funny is that they always know and they always tell us. Well, they know. Right. But. Uh, no one says oh, I see, I a see, lot I of other people we'll be wondering I, if a homeowner like oh what is this right okay. or Jane Miller from the five senses daycare I mean a lot of people won't know what yeah, Dover okay. amendment means yeah. either we'll and we don't want to go that far deep into it and but to that and, and, and to that point it really should say occupied by religious or educational uses protected by Dover. not solar panels not solar panels, which are also protected by Section 3, and uh, oh. <laughs> um, daycare centers, and hazardous waste facilities, and there's, oh. a, whole there's a bunch, sort, yeah. There's a whole sort of goodies in Section 3. Oh, I like that. But it doesn't, Section 3 does not include government. I was looking the other day. Well, if the land is owned by the government, and it's a, uh, and really? it's religious or educational, it, it does include that. But not a government so use. Like a public school. Okay, but oh. not like the town hall. But not the town hall. Right. Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> but you can, you're, it's fine. <laughs> as long as we put it in the Now we're up to the flag. And I should change this to the town of Reading. And it shouldn't say this. It should say the federal government, the state, or the town of Reading. The town or the town of Reading, are we saying? Here it should say the town of Reading. Adopted by others. Uh, uh, can it One flag not adopted. So this is a little bit of spot zoning, I guess. Whatever. We had a pretty good discussion about this. No, it's not. Trying to figure <laughs> out. We well, don't have just one different. We're trying to allow people to fly a flag if they want to fly a flag. It doesn't count towards their signage, right? It's not spot zoning, but anyway. So, so they can fly as many American flags and Massachusetts flags and town of Maine flags as they want. Plus one pirate flag. Right? Can they fly a pirate flag? Is that adopted by it? No, no, this is this is the one that's not adopted. You get one other. Yeah. I well, I think you're changing it from this to the. It changes the, the meaning, doesn't it? I was well, just thinking of that, but I don't. The question is, if, can you fly a New Hampshire flag or a New York flag? You can fly. Yeah. You can fly any flag. I mean, I think the point is we don't want to restrict someone from flying yeah, a Greek sure. flag. On St. Patrick's Day. <laughs> <laughs> well, it goes to that, right? So you've got an Irish pub or an Italian restaurant, and you've got your you sign. You might have your open flag, and you want to fly this Italian flag, whatever. Irish flag, yeah, uh, and not have it count towards your signage, I guess. I honestly, I don't think we should say they can't. I just don't think that's fair. Right. Say who can't? Like, I think we should allow someone to fly a flag of another nation if they want to. And this allows that. Right. Yeah. What we were saying is, in addition to right the national flag. Yes the state flag or the town of Reading flag, you can fly one more flag, whichever flag you want. All those other flags are exempt. Yes, so. This flag is, is this flag exempt or is no, this flag No, it's flag allowed. Is allowed. One this flag is authorized. authorized. That's right, yeah. so that's different. None, the others are exempt. Right? Yes. The yep. American flag and the Massachusetts flag. Right. 
and usually you get one. But to the point, the Italian restaurant can't have one flag that says open and another flag that is the flag. That yes, they can. This allows that because there are two different sections. Open is exempt. I was trying to specify oh, no, no. that. Where, did, where is open exempt? Well, we have a, it's in business. It's not written that way, though. No, it's not written that way. Oh, okay. Um, you fly a flag during the hours in which you're open. That's right. Okay. Yeah. That's in that kind of language. Okay. Yeah. All right. I forget where that is exactly. What if you have a Korean <coughs> Italian restaurant? And you want to fly. Well, Korean we're not flag. regulating the content, so you could, you could you cut, could, you, you could, could attach them together. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, if you, but you're not allowed to put up one flag for each of the New England states. <laughs> exactly. Because you're only allowed no. one flag. Right. Yeah, that's right. That's okay. what this says. What was I mean, Tony's? Tony had a good example where he had like 50 flags out for some reason. But it was uh, St. Patrick's Day, right? Von Raddy's? Tons of. Irish no, flags? it was it was basically you know flying a flag of every country. <laughs> we talked that down. It's one, one allowed flag beyond your signage, the content of which is not regulated, really. But I think Bunratty's has an open and an Irish flag. Mm -hmm. They don't <laughs> have a blade sign, though, right? They no. Blade. no. So they're allowed two signs. One of the flags is a sign, technically. But not actually technically. Not permitted. Not, they didn't get the permit for it. <laughs> you don't get to sub. I mean, this doesn't this allow is, you. This is what's happening. I'm sorry. You know, we're trying to accommodate an existing condition right now that'll become a regular condition, which is fine. But right now, it's it's like one place, and we're just, you know we don't want to make a change that that messes them up. So I noticed, I noticed when I was doing these edits the other day that this banners thing where it says they're allowed as temporary signs four times a year for 56 days, the with a sign permit contradicts the section heading. Temp, uh, somewhere, hold on. Temporary signs. It's, it's authorized signs it says they do not require a sign permit right at the at the very beginning yeah. of 8.3 big catch so should we just take that out <coughs> show sure. show us up there oh yeah so right up here 8.3 They're allowed for 56 days with a sign permit. They say they required signs for which no so aren't we saying signs for which no sign permit is required are identified in the table? Under authorized signs? They are and also identified in the table and here 8.3. I think we're set, we're queuing it up to say some have no signed permit, some have do require a permit. No, I think all of these are meant to not require a permit. Why do we say the following signs are authorized in every district and may be installed upon receipt of a building permit we're as needed? Distinguishing between sign permit and building permit. So some signs. I don't are big know. Enough. It's confusing. Mm -hmm. Like a flag, right. Glenn wants a building permit for a flag, but we don't need a sign permit. So we can make sure that it's mounted oh, yeah, correctly yeah, yeah, yeah. and doesn't okay, okay. become a flying dagger. Yeah. Um. And then like the Dover Amendment ones right. will require a building permit, but not a sign permit. So where would this go then? Um, 
temporary signs. All districts. Well, just the What if we just take out the sign permit part? The problem is uh, well, we don't know. Those those banners can be really out of control. If we don't permit them, we lose that hook. What? Do you care about sign? So, okay. Do mm -hmm. you care about banners that are in, in residential districts? Or, because you also have a provision for banners in the business and industrial district. I'll put it there. Okay. Yeah. The. Where is it, Bray? Of course, I lost it, but I well, on page 18 it. on the table, we see. Oh, yeah, I see it. Yep. Um, non illuminated. Temporary banners, flags, and streamers are allowed, provided they are mounted in a way that does not pose a hazard. That's. That also applies to flags. So you've got flag provisions and digital devices that seem to come together. But this is under temporary. Right, okay. Mm -hmm. So, so the provision about banners <coughs> that you have under all districts probably fits more comfortably under business and industrial zoning districts. And there's where you can, you can enforce the 56 day thing. So does that mean in residential we're not allowing them? No, I think it means we just don't care. It, we're not banners are prohibited if they're permanent. Right. Everywhere. Right. And they're permitted by permit only in the business and industrial. So you can't have one in the residential. You can have a temporary sign on your residential property. I'm saying, like, we have these, like, artists that we just did. Uh -huh. They're technically, because it's in residential, like, <coughs> I guess it, it goes to business B anyway, so we're right. kind of already in there. I'm just trying to think if there's a case where something would be residential. No, because we always do business B. I think we're okay. okay. Well, let's do that. Let's take this. Okay. underneath I'm sorry I put it like underneath where the other reference to banners but I don't know if, is that where it belongs and is that a contradiction no you have to combine the two you have to combine the two or maybe just take the word banners out of here. Um, let's see. Take out. Take out non illuminated temporary banners. So take out banners and flags. Out okay. Of that. Yeah. <coughs> yeah. I mean, there's a whole half a page on temporary signs. In the business and industrial district, so. That's what, yeah. 
So now we're going back up to page four. Yeah, page ten. Um, we're adopting your language, and then we're one of them. We're saving for next year. Can, can I need to go backwards? Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm. So. This uh, my line of thinking um, comes from. I'm going back to flags. Just, this is just wording, not changing. Um, I, I really couldn't not understand like that the way that we phrased one flag adopted by other than this federal government it makes my head spin. Um, can we instead say, in addition to flags that are authorized under 8.34? one flag adopted by any federal, state, or local government may be allowed. I don't know if we use the word any, but I think that's what we well, said before. Why don't you just say one flag is allowed in addition to what's permitted in the other? Do you care who adopts it? No. That's good. One. And it's just I, broad. I, I thought that was the part of the discussion before, that we care who adopts it. Or can no, it be a pirate? Flag? We're just saying it can be other than. Okay. Yeah. 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 All right. No. So, what right. was your yeah. beginning well, language? In addition, like flags. in addition to flags that are authorized under 8.34. IV. IV, yeah, sorry. One flag, one additional flag may be allowed. Right. Mm. Could be the LA Raiders. Could yes. Be, yeah, you know. In the Broncos, one flag yeah. is allowed. Is allowed. Be allowed. Okay. And then going back to 8.3 IV, I think, based on a comment you made before, that that should read a flag that has been adopted by the federal government, the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, or the town of Reading. Yes. May de be displayed. Da, da, da. Right? Yes. We have to be consistent. All right. All right. Thank you, John. Mm -hmm. No more going back. That's it now. <laughs> it's only forward oh. from here forward. Does anybody know if it's actually, if that flag has ever been made official by anybody? Well, that's why it's good we took that language out. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. The adopted, the word adopted. That's yep. Perfect okay. Yep. Yep. <laughs> okay. On page 10, 8.4n, signs that contain adult language. Can we say that? Or we already took it out. It to okay. Yeah. Regulate content okay. anyway. It doesn't make a difference. Okay. Page 11. Except you can regulate. You can't prohibit obscene. Uh, Nazi flag? Is that obscene? Nazi flag is not obscene. Okay. What about the content. Confederate flag? Also not obscene. No. So, under the, since neither of those two have been officially adopted, Right, I know. That's that, that's sort of the follow-up discussion. Haven't they both there. been officially adopted in times past? Yeah, yeah. perhaps. Yeah. I mean, the yeah. Confederate flag was certainly yeah. officially adopted. So was the Nazi flag. Okay. <laughs> you, anyway. Moving on. When you start to content, how absurd the should get pretty quickly. So you Page 11, is that where we are now? Yeah. yeah. So. Yeah. You're gonna fool with this, this, or you're gonna just leave it for now? 
Which part? The building part about, code. About whether you can't only only signs that that are actually affixed to the glass. And no, we're not dealing with that this year. No. Okay, that's, fine. that's why it says next year. Okay. Um, and then the one thing that you had in red, be neat and professional in appearance. We yeah. found that in like so many other codes. I don't. I don't think that the language itself is is a problem so much as if you attempted to enforce it, you're almost you know ordering somebody to take down their their sign because it's crummy. Is, <laughs> I'm just telling. It's just a caution. Don't you can put it here, but just don't ever try to enforce it. And the AG will probably say the same thing. <clears throat> yeah, well the, the, well, the AG is approving everybody's sign bylaws. Right, with lots they, of caution. They're, they're, they're <laughs> now, it's a good approach. <laughs> caution saying, but don't Sorry, violate the bylaws. Supreme Court. Right. Okay, well, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> we'll do our best. <laughs> <laughs> it's a boy, boy yeah, consult, wow. And in case of... The, in, Case of doubt, consult town council. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Be prepared. Okay. okay. Well, I'm just saying, it, no, it, the language itself I don't think is a problem. I just think that the minute you try to enforce it, someone is going to say you're you're objecting to the content of, of my sign and we're off to the races. And so yeah. put it there, it's fine. Um, but just be really careful if you ever try to enforce it. Right. Mm -hmm. There's no enforcement law. Luckily, you, don't, you never have to enforce this. No, we can embarrass somebody into setting <laughs> up their sign. <laughs> <laughs> it has nothing to do with content. Really. It's not the content of this. It's how it's put together. It won't be a problem. Like in stitches. <laughs> <laughs> We're not driving around looking for these no. things. Let's just say we, we have higher priorities. <laughs> and when people co complain, we say town council told us not to. Yes, I know. Let's see if we can't get through this in the next two minutes. <laughs> yes, indeed. Okay. All right. Um. All right. Page twelve. All right. Looks good to me. Twelve was fine. Thirteen right. is where we kept the itemized list at the heading of each of the zones, so that. The user could quickly understand what was or was not prohibited, what's allowed and what's prohibited. So we understand we need to be very good about making sure that it's consistent between this language and the table. Yeah. And is what we did under master signage plan acceptable? So you mean the, the, the sentence? So as to provide the changes in business occupancy which may occur within the building, the CPDC will not consider the content that? Yeah, I mean, we're yeah. basically saying mm -hmm. that we're complying with. Yes. I mean, it's a little funny because you're not considering the content anywhere. But well, right. But, but specifically here, we're just looking at dimensions and locations and things like that versus like okay. actual business tenant signs. Okay. So. I'll let that pass for now. Are we good with page 13? I think we're good. So. Mm -hmm. the okay. One, a one word suggestion. Uh, it says CPDC will not consider the content, or CPDC will not constrain the content. No, we're not considering it at all. It's not constitutional to consider it. Next. 
How about review? Will not review. I was thinking about the same. Review. Well, the thing is that we'll see it, we'll consider it, and but we can't do it. We can't <laughs> regulate it. I mean. We'd look at the font and the color and the size of whatever yeah. it is, graphics they're putting in the board they proposed. They yeah. wouldn't know the business names anyways. They might just come in and say, logo here, or name here. Right. Right. That's the point. We're just saying, like, if you get a master signage plan and you have specific tenants, we're not tying you to those specific tenants. We're not, okay. you know. We're just the comments were really only in the uh, allowed and prohibited portion. Are we good? That was it, right? And then there's the table. After all of these, there's the table. was a non-conforming anything else and it was damaged by a storm or whatever, you would allow it to be reconstructed. If it's a sign, we're saying that um, if it's more than 50% of the replacement cost at the time of the damage, then it can't be reconstructed. I don't think that conforms with the zone. That's already, that's in our bylaw right now, isn't it? Yep. Yeah, we've actually uh, enforced that a long time ago. Sans court case. <laughs> <laughs> long why time does, ago. Why does a non-conforming sign have to follow the rules for a non-conforming building? No, we're saying it's a non-conforming sign. The non sign did sign. He's, uh, he's saying that if it was a non-conforming building that was... Yeah. Could we build it back to those limits? I right? think he's going to the right. state statute on non-conforming. Was a non-conforming like building mm -hmm. in a in a um, in a coastal zone, and this exact same thing happened. I don't think you could rebuild it. No. Yeah. Why was uh, Perfecto allowed to keep its corner in the stream? It kept the foundation. That was reconstructed. Yep. With a variance? Uh, I think so, yeah. I think that, did they get a, no, I think they got a special permit to well, rebuild. <coughs> they did get they something had, from the zoning board. Yeah, they had the initial approval because it was, uh, you know, in kind in place. Yeah. yeah. But okay. they determined that that was structurally unsound. And they went and got additional. That's right. After. But my point is, I don't see why signs and buildings have to follow the same rules for non-conforming. Yeah, this is. is what is it? This is not Chapter Forty A. It is Chapter Forty A. But it's not that that same statute. I mean, that statute applies to single and two-family non-conforming single and two-family structures. No, it's not Section Six. You're right. Right. So. That's why we put it in. It's its own. And if something bad happens, it's all. Just to make sure it's 50%. You can see <laughs> it's certainly a different scale <laughs> versus somebody's home. Right. It was okay, so 731 the building inspector may grant a building permit for repair or interior renovations of non conforming structures that are conforming as to use. Is a sign considered a structure? Yeah. 
well, a free non-conforming as to use, right? That's Yeah, we like it. Yeah, if it gets challenged, it does. <laughs> <laughs> then we're off to the races. <laughs> All right. We have a great jockey. We're not worried. <laughs> <laughs> now, this is my favorite part. That's I found it. it really difficult that you gave us a revised table without showing us what you changed. Yes, I'm Microsoft just Word's saying fault. that. That was Microsoft <laughs> Word's fault because <laughs> okay. when we, every time we tried to do a compare documents, oh. it would. It's the entire uh, table. Yeah. It would, table. You can't it do would it either tell us the whole right. thing is different, right. which is not very informative. Right. Or if you tried to do it sequentially, the, the, the columns would get. Oh, yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, explode the table and convert it to just text and then do the edits. In the future, because then you'll just get regular editing, you know, regular track changes. It doesn't like tables. Huh? So I did my best okay. to like incorporate. I compared them side by side, okay. and I did my best. I didn't love all your proposed changes, though. Well, of course you didn't. Right. So, okay. and that's why I have some questions. All like, right. uh, Go as you can see. So the first one is, why did you suggest we remo remove? Fuel pump signs. Because we put fuel si because I put fuel pump signs into the definition of governmental signs. So I can regulate this governmental signs. And did we not do that? We didn't. Did we? Yeah. Did yes, we you, adopt yeah. that regulation? You, you, adopted, yeah. you adopted that change. So oh. You okay. So remove it from here then. Yes. Okay. okay. That's fine with me. Oops. That's not going to work. And then um, the open house one, you had it say the intersection thing was the same as the garage sale, but in the text it's not. In the text it specifies plus one per intersection. doesn't limit the number of intersections. Okay. Um, All right. And then, oh, the banners one I have to fix. Mm -hmm. I have to move that whole thing anyway. So I'll do that tomorrow. Um. One of the things that was driving me a little batty on this is that is that the table, the, the bylaw has special rules for for business A, business B, and business C districts, and, um, and and some of them are cumulative. Yeah, I think it's easier. For people to look in one place. Okay, but the table then does it differently. It's not organized the same way as the text. Right, I know. That was intentional. Okay. So the table's not a mile long. Okay. Um. So then awnings and canopies, I took out the part about requiring an annual permit from the Board of Selectmen because they don't, unless I'm missing something. Yeah, no. Okay. Um, I, I know you moved some of my some of the text to footnotes, mm -hmm. but I just, I don't know, I thought in some cases it made it a lot more complicated. So I left it. A judgment. That's a judgment, yes. Yes. You make, you make whatever judgment you like. Um, and then you'd added the word wo door. It says it was said window and door signs, but we don't really talk about doors, I don't think. The glass of the door. Do you have set different rules for for signs that are attached to doors as opposed to signs that are attached to windows? Well, specifically the the. 
uh, the electronic signs, whatever, may not be attached to doors. They're right. excluded from. That's right. Okay. That's Where's the? Oh, there's the A-frames. Okay. Yeah, I'll have to reformat yeah. the whole yeah. thing. Yeah, we'll have to make sure that if it doesn't fit on one page that we repeat the header. The header, yeah, just so. Right. Yeah, right, okay. Um, oh, so we, okay, yeah. All right, so I'll put that back. Um, What about the ones that can go in windows but not in doors? <laughs> I, <laughs> I just don't, is that Eliminate. covered? If I add door into the table, am I contradicting something? Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? Unless it's all yeah, because in it, that well, section. It, it just says C section 8.5.1 C, right? Yeah, so are they all in so. there? Yeah, that includes doors. That, yes. Does it include the part about what can go in a window but not in a door? Yes, it does. <laughs> it's all in there. Really? Yeah, I think it's all one big. It's all in there. And okay, all okay. All right. I'll put that back. Wave the white flag. <laughs> no. We always quit before this Flag's part, and then I get stuck fixing this part, and it kills me. Um, and then, okay, you put something about farm slash garden stand without permanent windows. Wh why do we? That's just how it was in the text. Really? Where? Uh, um, page 12. Uh, 8.5.1. Okay. No, you're right. I see it. I just, but do we need to say that on the table? If this is, I don't know. It seems, well, it seems crazy. This is why it's a, it's a problem to have text and tables saying the same thing. And, and, um, and I think when we, when we do a more thorough cleanup of this bylaw, that's the kind of thing that we're going to we're gonna have to worry about. Because, um, well, this is, the we table is not, it, you know, the table is substantive. And, um, so. Well, can't we just replace the, the verbiage here with the section reference? It says, you know, C section 851 E. Yeah, we can do that in the table. Put in the table reference to 8.5. E. Yeah. Wow. I didn't even notice that that was in there. Oh, well, that allows them some, some signage, which a business yep. which had windows would have. Other part, right? Okay. okay. All right. Anybody? Page twenty. Else? Hmm. Notes. 
We still have the accessory structures one. Oh. <laughs> Alright, why don't we look at that? Any comments on signage? <laughs> I'm in favor any opposes the vote. <laughs> oh, do we need to approve this? Thank you. Do. Oh yeah. All right. So we need to approve this. <laughs> Um, As amended by me tomorrow, like I'm going to go through and make a couple more okay. fixes that we talked about. Mm -hmm. Move that the CPDC approve the uh, draft provisions of the changes to the signing bylaw uh, as discussed and uh, further amended. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Five point five accessory buildings or structures. So you voted to put it on the warrant. You voted to put it on the warrant as amended. Do we need to vote to approve the language? Or does that come at a time right before town meeting? Let the other ones you did at the same time. Mm. So moved. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'll second that. <laughs> uh, All in favor? Great. All right, now accessory structures. Yeah, and so Tony had brought up a good point about what are the impacts of excluding accessory apartments from that one um, section. And then Ray noticed that they actually contradicted each other. So, where's my copy? Talking about 1C? Yeah. 5.5.1. So yeah, so I took it, I, uh, Tony actually sent me a list of implications, um, which I tried to account for by incorporating the language in other parts. It's very confusing. So basically, if we had that there in section 1C, it would mean that accessory apartments could be permitted in a required front yard, could be less than 10 feet from the primary structure and not subject to the dimensional limits of the principal structure, would not be limited to one story or 12 feet in height, and maybe less than five feet from the nearest lot line and occupy more than 25% of the required rear or side yard because the accessory apartments section doesn't have its own specifications regarding those items. Um, so. What's happening here? Um, so if you look at 5.5.1, C. Right. Removing accessory apartments are not subject to the section here. Um. Because we do want them to be subject to some of the requirements. Right. And th but then also regulated on their own under section 547. And I excluded it from F because we have a specific definition for accessory apartment under 547 that allows it to be 35% um, of the gross floor area or up to 1,000 1, square feet. So we don't want to avoid the contradiction there. Do we have that, 547? Uh, you. Uh, voted to put it That's on the right. warrant. It was an earlier. 
Right, there's two outs. Um, there's the, I mean, here it is if you want to see it. No, I don't remember. We, we increased the size. Comments from the public while we're waiting. <laughs> 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 well, this whole then, time. Yeah, I'm, okay. I'm still a little bit concerned about um, 5511 D. Flagpoles? No, this, this is the less than 10 feet from the principal structure. Um, Sorry, which one? Five, five, one. Uh, one D. Oh, yeah. D. It's um, because the it's not the accessory building which is necessarily constrained. It's the combination of the two. That's yeah. in the existing bylaw. I mean, I'm not saying that you can't be concerned, but just so you know, that's not new. No, oh, I I understand that, okay. but I mean, this is one of the things where I proposed to change which I thought we had uh, but that doesn't make sense about. I think it makes sense that this exists because if somebody came to you with an entirely new structure with an attached garage that was beyond the setback you'd have to get a variance right right no I mean I agree a hundred percent with that but the way the wording is it says uh, you know, comma, and is subject to the dimensions and requirements of a principal structure. And it's not the accessory thing which is subject to the requirements. It's, it's, it increases the existing principal structure so that the, the, you have to draw the line around both of them. So should we say the principal structure? What do you... Oh, uh, that's... Yeah, that's probably enough. No, it's because it's as though it were part of the principal yeah. structure. And so since the since it's likely that the principal structure conforms is conforming, it's within the setbacks. The accessory structure is what's being pushed out to the side. <coughs> well, but if we get into uh, lot coverage and, and other things, the question is, if you put four accessory structures 10 feet or you know eight feet away from your, your house, can you now make the whole thing, uh, you know, 60% lot coverage instead of 30? No, it's subject no, it's to the else. dimensional requirements. You'd have to make it as though we're one big structure yeah. and all the space in between all those eight foot spaces count as though it were built. You're growing the structure, basically. But you have to respect I, the setbacks. That's my point. I don't know if the words say that. <laughs> they do to me. Okay. The way, the way we've been designing it with this is that any accessory structure that is closer than 10 feet can't be any closer to the lot line than 15 feet on the side, 20 feet from the back, or 20 mm -hmm. feet from the front. It's considered to be conforming. No, so I, I, I know that we're doing the right thing. Yeah, you just want to make sure we're communicating it right. well. Chief What you're saying is that if, if it's an accessory building that's within 10 feet of the principal building, then those two buildings have to be, have to be treated as if they were a single building for the purposes yep. of the dimension right. requirements, mm -hmm. right? Yep. So you wanted to say an accessory building or structure located on the building. Mm -hmm. 
Well, actually, the other way to, to solve this is to remove the, the words and is. What, does this sound better? An accessory building or, or a structure, including a garage, that is less than 10 feet from a principal structure on the lot is considered attached to. And yeah, instead of saying any, just say an accessory building or structure less than 10 feet from a principal structure on the lot is considered attached to. Does that make it clearer? It's, um, I don't understand what the yeah, issue is. The only thing to me that isn't clear from this is if you're calculating lot coverage, is the space in between the principal structure and the accessory structure considered part of that um, part of that envelope? That's the only thing to me when I read this that is is left open to interpretation. Do you understand what I'm saying? I, like, do you then draw the, the, the lot coverage area around the principal house and, and, and the imaginary line that it connects within 10 feet? No. Or is it the two individual structures are the lot coverage? I think he just looks uh, at just the goes by limit lot of the coverage. structure. Yep. Yeah. But then if you attach them later, then that attachment would be part of it. That's the only thing to me that seems a little Dimensional it's not numbers. defined in here. I think the intent was to, because it can be easy to attach it with just even a little pergola at the end or yeah. on, that everything should conform. So that's right. the intent. We want all of it to conform to the setbacks. So however that gets worded, I think is the yeah. intent. Yeah. From Glenn's perspective. In there. So instead of saying the same dimensional requirements, you really want I, I want to leave it the way it is because if somebody comes in with somebody could cover that later. Yeah. Mm, okay. Maybe it's I, I don't know that there's been a problem with it. No. Okay. We're gonna create a problem. Yeah, I think it's good. And then in a year we'll know. <laughs> what issues have come up and let's tweak it again. again. I don't think this one's ever been a problem. Well, the way it's currently written, it's extremely confusing. Okay. That's why we're redoing it. But no, not this, not the way we're proposing it, but the way that it's in the current bylaw. The rest of it. We're ready it's for the very vote? confusing. Okay, this is awesome. <laughs> <laughs> ready when you are. Okay. Or, uh, okay. Move that the CPDC approve the draft revision for the accessory structures and um, propose it for the warrant at the town meeting. Mm -hmm. For a second. Check. Discussion? No. Nope. All in favor? We don't have minutes yet, so we'll do those next time. Okay. Um, I was going to try to confirm those of you who can be at the joint CPDC Board of Selectmen um, meeting with like the development community on October 4th. This is the downtown zoning. Right. Continue. I sent an email about it a while ago. I'm already scheduling out to October. <laughs> well, yes, for me. Yeah. You know. Yep. I think that's the only date that really works. So. Right. Um. Okay. You'll just put it on your calendars. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very Thanks. much. Is there some other housekeeping sign? Um, oh yes. 
Oh, yes. Okay, do we have an A&R here? No. That's, uh, that was from last time. I just gave you a copy because he gave me copies okay. for you guys, so I figured in case you're interested, you can have it. What else do we have? Um, the library submitted their sign permit, and there's an additional sign on it that we were not aware of um, that I thought you guys might want to just take a look at. Like on the building, big neon. <laughs> Something like that, yeah. <laughs> Something with the Fenway Park lighting. Just sort of shoehorned in there. Sure. In tiny letters. I'm sure. <laughs> so this one you saw. It's this one. So on the outside of that new glass edition. Um, on the parking lot side. This is the parking no, lot. That's the. That's is the that the parking lot side or that's the street side? <coughs> it's the park. Uh, oh, that's well, a good question. Why does that look so strange? Why mm -hmm. does what look so strange? Are you showing me a picture? Or well, a the render? photo is like, I think, oh, what it used to okay. be. It's like they're going back to old times. Got it. Um, that's the parking so lot side. So here is. I mean, that looks a lot different than the I think it is the parking lot side. Yeah, I think it is. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It is. With that, it makes yeah. it look like the parking lot side. Yep. Right. That's definitely the parking lot side. Yep. Those letters look a lot smaller than the rendering. Um, I think in the rendering, it, they're like 15 inches or something. 15.32. Actually, the letters are... The proportions aren't right either in the render. 15. Um, <clears throat> okay, so 14.32. Yeah, and then with the rail, it's like 15.32 15 something. something like that. Yeah, it's like another inch. It's just metal letters, they're not lit up. It says it? there's one inch steel. deep fabricated stainless steel letters mounted to the rail via the top stud. Go back to the elevation, because that's probably the more accurate. And when someone approaches this, pulls into the parking lot, and enters a building, they're going to think they're not going into the library? Is that why we need another sign? <laughs> it's uh, it's going to Reading High School. It's not illuminated. Transported as as it's back. Not 80 years? years? What? It's just shoehorned in there. It's a public library lot. Just like Much the like the hall. town hall is a public town hall lot. It's a yeah, that, municipal yes, lot. Yeah. It's not a municipal lot. Not a municipal lot. No. Just like the police station is for the police department and the fire station is for the fire department. But no. again, we're clear these are not illuminated. They're not illuminated. Not illuminated. Well, well that, as clear, shown. <laughs> as shown. Yeah. I don't think they would get some issues to deal with on illumination. I mean, they're kind of backlit, really. Because the light's going to be on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is there an entrance on that side? There is. Yeah, to the left there underneath is. the yeah. REA. Like over, over in here somewhere. No, right here. Yeah. 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 Oh, so they You know, why not? glass. Not uninteresting. I guess the only comment we would have that I would have is that it's it would not have been a metro can do something way like cooler than this. To have that sign. Town managers asked us to treat them like they were any other entity. Yep. So that's why I asked whether this was a public lot. Would they be allowed to have a sign on the back of the lot? Like what a like any other entity, like a business in a residence yes. zone, like, like a business bank. B. Like the bank's got. Yeah, like what does zoning allow? Right, so. Yeah. Zoning wouldn't have allowed it unless it's a public lot, a public way. 
They probably would have gotten a variance granted for it. Would you consider this, I mean, we do allow awning signs in business B. Um, I guess. We just regulate the letter size, so this would be way beyond that. Um, unless you consider this a projecting sign, because it projects downward. I'm just trying to... It has to project from the building But face. then this would be way bigger than what we allow. Yeah. So. I'm not offended by it. It's just as long as it's not lit, because I think mm. the residences are on the opposite side of this lot, so it's just more lighting sort of being thrown at them. But I, I don't think it would have been allowed. They would have had to have gotten a variance. Again, if they were a private entity. Right. And they probably would have been granted that variance. Or they would have gone with um, window signage. Mm -hmm. Right. <laughs> Which I think this is in some ways nicer. Well, in yeah. terms. Yes. yes. I yes. think it's it is. Yeah. 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 In terms of um, sign area, I mean, they've got. Uh, the the length of the, f the facade is enormous. Yeah, right. Uh, sign area is, should not be an issue. Yeah. And this, to, to me, this sort of goes to the point of why are we setting up um, regulations? We just spent probably way too long setting up all, all these regulations that w we, as a government, as a town government, can't live by. <coughs> But we're making the rest of the community live by. That's the problem with this that I have. Not necessarily this sign at all. Right. It's well, it's it's that. What are we doing? What are we doing? Why are we making regulations that that in this What's case, um, <coughs> you know, Cal Reese's business day. A. Um. No, P U D B. P U D. Oh. UDB. B. So before that, Tim Boney's proposal to have the commercial strip, the small commercial building, we, were, we asked him to push it to the front. He was going to have signage on the front because that was the exposed side, but all the engines were on the rear, and he would have yeah, had yeah, signage on both sides. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> That's why I'm saying we mm -hmm. like to, there's such a unique situation here where the, the, the front entrance really just addresses the public view, not really the, the entrance so much. Although I guess there's a, there's a new drop off yeah. up there right yeah. now. Mm -hmm. But same same point though. Yeah. Yeah. We likely would have allowed it. Just I don't know that it's in the code easily mm -hmm. they could do it. Well it's facing the parking lot, but it's too big. I mean that's the, the sign? Yeah. I thought you just said it was the total opposite of that. Because they have all this well, if it, were, if it were on the front facing the, uh, okay. the regular traffic, I mean, the sign, a regular commercial sign would have, you know, X square feet according to our formulas. <coughs> but the, uh, you know, the neighbors on the other side of the parking lot aren't the primary customer. No, but uh, you're pulling into it. It's, I guess I don't have a problem with the way it looks. I don't think it's overscaled. It's also appropriate for the new addition, whereas the yep. front side is more the historic view, yeah, and so right, that right monument yeah. side is more appropriate. Yeah. So if you consider this a wall sign, then it looks like it is within the regulations. Yeah, so, so much area. Yeah. Something to keep in mind, though. Someone's going to come to us with a more. Uh, actually, um, Tread was talking about doing this type of sign, right? Kind of like a cutout on the steel piece projecting and the halo okay. behind. That's right. We're going to see more of that from canopies, from projection, from recesses. Won't be strictly on a wall. We'll have to figure out how we classify it. Okay. 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 Anything else? We're putting a, a list together for the town manager on um, 
developers that we think would be helpful to have for this joint meeting. So if there's anybody that you could think of or, um, you know, should Julie or I have an email on it. Um, it's the usual suspects, the ones that we mostly used in the zoning project, that type of thing. We called them stakeholders and we did stakeholder interviews. Right. Okay. Um, we got our second 40B um, letter of uh, project eligibility request. That the request went to Mass Housing Partnership and then we're, we were given the opportunity to comment on it. So we prepared some comments for the town manager to mm -hmm. put in a letter. Um, it's for um, Schoolhouse Commons. Right. That's the St. Agnes School, 172 Holden Street. Yeah, we, the, we had the, uh, the safe, safe walk, if you yep. will. Dave joined, and um, so it's 20 units, and they're doing a unique, fi a new financing program at Mass Housing Partnership that, <coughs> that says 20% of the units are affordable, but they're affordable to the 50% of um, median income. It's a lower demographic, but fewer units. And all will still count. All the units count. All perpetuity. 20. That's what we've recommended, perpetuity. Okay. Yep. Um, so that um, is pretty, they're actually, they're moving the retaining wall. This is kind of the piece right. that, in my mind, is well, they have pretty to significant to make yeah. the width for the fire truck. That, They're shifting that wall that's closer to the church, moving it closer to the moving church. Moving it closer to the church. Are they losing parking? No, 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 no. The, this is to widen the drive aisle to accommodate the fire truck. Is the church, church losing parking? parking. No. no, no, no. It's the embankment in between. Right. Yeah, the, I mean the the triple is. I mean currently the exit from the church is the same right. curb cut as yep. the entry right. to the so now it'll be thing. A they're going to reverse that for the building and then uh, rebuild a different retaining wall yep. so that they can widen the exit from the Everyone uh, residential will be exiting area. there. Yeah. But that retaining wall is going the almost the whole length of the... Yeah. And in some, <coughs> I guess at the highest point it's about seven feet. That's a big wall, mm -hmm. plus a guardrail on top, <coughs> because you don't want the cars from St. Agnes to run them. Well, I mean, the, the difference in elevation between the St. Agnes lot and there is at most of 20 feet or 25 yeah. feet. So. Yeah. And at the, the parking lot, I mean, this remember from the Boy Scout days. So we uh, we expect one more 40B to come in, either late fall, early winter. That will make our fifth 40B. I think the state will at some point give us some relief and say we've had enough for a little while, maybe a year. Well, <laughs> we're hoping that this last one will get us over the hump, but it's hard to say. We're, um, do we know where it is? It's still being discussed, so okay. details to follow. But lots, lots going on on that, and um, yeah, that's really can't think of anything else. Anything else? Um, we're going to be advertising for the economic development position. <clears throat> That'll be in in the next couple of weeks. Um, around Labor Day, they're trying to post it. So that'll be kicking around. And we're doing some work on peer communities. So the 25 peer communities. Um, actually, Jessie's doing a little project for us. So she's going to go around and do some peer community analysis of the 
25, um, we put a little survey together, try and understand what they're doing in economic development, community development, and get some baseline information. <coughs> kind of benchmark where we're at. Mm -hmm. So that's another thing we're working on. Okay. I think that's it. Mm -hmm. Move to adjourn. <coughs> Second.